Er det kjekt å være sammen? Ja. Eh, I løpet av uka så har vi av og til velsignet hverandre og bedt for hverandre og litt sånn forskjellig. Nå skal vi få gjøre det på en litt annerledes måte. Vi skal synge om at vi er så glad for å se hverandre, og at vi ønsker å lyse Guds fred over hverandre. Og det gjør vi til Heaven of Shalom Alechem. Og dette er en sånn sang hvor vi synger til hverandre, og dette er helt uvant for oss, for vanligvis så ser vi fremover, så har vi nakkefellesskap, men nå skal vi se hverandre i ansiktet. Dette er veldig skummelt for veldig mange, men så bare lukk øynene og vær i bønn hvis du har lyst til å ikke være med på dette. Det er helt greit. Shalom Aleichem, Eleinu Shalom Aleichem, Eleinu Shalom Aleichem, Eleinu Shalom Shalom Shalom. Ye bi shoklam ya seray, ye bi shoklam o ya seray, ye bi shoklam o ya seray. Yeah, we should go, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, we should go, so, go, so, go, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's free, yeah, it's free, yeah, we need that. Yeah, it's free, yeah, we need that. Yeah, it's free, yeah, we need that. Yeah, it's free, it's free, it's free. Shalom, 
Kjære Jesus, vi ønsker å komme frem for deg i dag, og vi ønsker å glede oss i ditt hus, Herre. Vi ønsker å leve for deg, Herre. Vi ønsker å være frie, Herre. Den eneste måten vi kan være frie på, Herre, det er å gi deg alt, Herre. Så vi ønsker å gi deg alt. Amen! Jesus, alt for Jesus, alt jeg er og og drømmer om å bli Jesus Alt for Jesus Alt jeg er og har Og drømmer om å bli Jesus, alt for Jesus Jesus Alt jeg er og har Og drømmer om å bli Jesus Alt for Jesus Alt jeg er og har Og drømmer om å bli For det er bare i For det Jesus, Jesus, 
Gewalt von Jesus, auch ja, ja, du auch, oh, drumherum. Jesus, halt vor Jesus, halt ja, ja, du halt, und drumherum und blieb. Alle meine Ambitionen hoch und planen. Alle meine Ambitionen. Everybody. Prise dig, Herre. Du vil være oss selv, Herre. Du våger å vise hvem vi egentlig er, Herre. Du våger å glede oss innenfor dig, Herre. Glede oss over frelsen, Herre. Åh, Jesus. Og kom og fyll oss med din ånd. Kom, Helge ånd. Og fyll dette rommet. Fyll mitt liv. Fyll vårt liv. Åh, kom, Helge ånd.
sing it out. Go for it. rejoice let's declare this tonight as we sing this I will rejoice I will rejoice and be glad and I want you to just stand and with everything within you I just want you to really just give it your all you know God told me a little while a couple of years ago actually he's like Kelly when you worship I want you to worship with everything inside of you I don't want just you know to walk into a room and for somebody to be like oh hi Kelly I want them to be so happy to see me. I want them to be like, hi, Kelly, it's so good to see you. <laughs> so we're just going to rejoice tonight. <laughs> so I want you to just give it your everything, okay? Can you do that? I'm not asking too much, am I? <laughs> He's asking for it, okay? And I will re-
rejoice in him tonight. Give him your love with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. We rejoice in you. We rejoice in your love. We rejoice in your mercy, in your grace, and in your mighty power. the Lord a mighty shout of praise tonight. Come on, shout unto Him. Give Him glory and honor in this room tonight. Oh. You know, we're singing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Wir singen der Konge des Konge, o Herren des Herren. He's the nicest person in the universe. He's the kindest, he's the wisest, he's the most powerful. And he's your king tonight. And not only that, he loves you. He loves you so much he laid his life down for you. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. It's the best news that a best any human, human being has ever heard. So it's it's amazing. amazing. Give him a praise tonight. Come on. Praise on him. Come in. Shout to him. Jesus. Hope to him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. What a savior. What a king. What a lord. <laughs> My goodness. Well, turn and speak to three or four people. Tell them you're excited. Will you do that? Oh, the Lord is just... Doing such an amazing work in you. Oh, heaven, you're so many a flot, Terrican. So many a bra. How many of you have been blessed this week? Really Come on, blessed. Come on, that sing that you love about the new I'm not talking about a mild blessing. It's not just about just a little blessing. No, it was okay. You know, no, I'm talking okay. about. I loved it this week. God oh, has met with me. Tastes the new guy. God has met with me. What's that? Come up, left there. That's the stuff that changes lives. The dead is on for van believe. And uh, God knows we need our lives changed and transformed. Don't you dwet that me think of all life of van religious and Sometimes I think the worst thing would be for him to leave us as we are. To not take to get the worst had worth man bare lut us vere som me er. Or really leave us as the way we used to be, you know, 5 or 10 years ago. And also bare vere som me var for 50 år siden. This is much more fun. This is life, isn't it? This is the kingdom of God. This is his power coming. I think we should come down, Steve, where we can uh, reach the people a little more. Oh, I wonder what the Holy Spirit wants to do, huh? Do you know he wants to reach down inside you and just touch you? Han har lust att sträcka sin hand ner in i dig och röra dig, välsigna dig. With this wonderful power. Hans fantastisk gode makt. Carol was talking about um, letting the river of God flow and moving in the anointing, releasing the spirit. Carol snackte om det för att kunna låta Guds el flyta. Why don't you just give blessing away to the person sitting next to you right now? Just lay hands on them appropriately and say more. But lay hands on them and say more, God. More, Lord. More. Come 
Come on, give them more here. Come on, ye end them out. Let the river flow. La elven fleet up. Oh, let the river flow. La elven fleet up. Jesus said this. Jesus said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Is no one thirsty on coming to me and drink? So you have to drink something. Du må drikke noe. You drink the presence of the Holy Spirit. Du drikker den hellige ånds nærvær. And that's another way that you can receive him, you know. En annen måte vi kan ta imot han. It looks a little childlike, but that's good exercise and good practice for us. Så det ser sånn barnslig ut, men det er en god øvelse, god trening. Hold your glass up to heaven. Bare ta opp ditt glass til himmelen nå. Some of you have a barrel. Du må ikke ha den bøtte her nå. Say, Lord, fill my cup. Say, Heaven, fill my cup with your wonderful Holy Spirit. Then, fantastic Helion's. Okay, now, now, drink it down. Tell us to drink it now. Drink the head cup. Some of you got it the first time. I mean, this is amazing. This is like the third first to go in. You see, if you're sitting there thinking, "Oh, come on, this is too childish," I said, "You sat there thinking that the lid for Bouncey, just an imaginary cup after all, it's an imaginary drink, then, then you miss it. No, it's actually a real drink. You don't see it. It's spiritual. The only, but it's high test. Men det er høy oktan. And it's very powerful. Oh, they're very mighty. It's the Holy Spirit we're speaking of. They're the Holy Ghost and we're talking about. And okay, it's for the children. It's not for the wise and learned. And so they are for barna, ikke for de vise og de lærde. And so, just be childlike. Bare være barnlig. And be thirsty. Thirsty. Og være tøste. Say God. Og si Gud. I really, really want you tonight. Jeg har så lyst på deg i kveld. Will you help me? Kan ikke du hjelpe meg? I want a drink of you. Jeg vil drikke av deg. Hold up your glass one more time. Jeg bare tilt glass en gang til. Fill it up, Lord. Fill det opp, Herre. Fill it up. Right to the top. Are you ready? Er du klar? I don't know what they say in Norwegian. The Germans go, ein, zwei, sufa. Jeg vet ikke hva de sier på norsk, men sier en, to, tre, jeg tror jeg. One, two, three. En, to, tre, drikk det opp. Let that wonderful refreshing just come upon them. Den forfriskningen som er der. Dear Jesus. Takk, Jesus. Come on, Martin. Come here, Martin. I think you need to help me. Nå må du hjelpe meg. Just go and lay hands on a couple of those women and say, Mer, that one, that one. Bare gå og lekke på deg og si, Mer. Mayor, tell the person next to you, Mayor. Mayor here. Mayor here. More Lord. You know, we're way past due to have fun in church. Way past due. Altså, nå er det sannlig på tida at vi har det gøy i kjerka. It's time again to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Nå er det på tida å glede oss over Herrens nærvær. Alan was taking testimonies earlier, you know. Han Allen tog noen vittnesbørd før i dag. And uh, he interviewed one lady who, her, her, her testimony actually saddened me a little. Han pratet med en dame og hennes vittnesbørd egentlig gjorde meg litt lei meg. Because she said, I was such a happy person naturally that I did not want to become a Christian. 
Hun sa at jeg er egentlig så, så glad før at jeg ikke ville bli en kristen. Because I looked at all the other Christians around me and they were all sad. Så bra vi andre kristne, de så så trist ut. Now see, that is upside down. Nei, det er opp ned. We who love Jesus are the happiest people on earth. De med som elsker Jesus er med de lykkeligste mennesker på jorden. One of the fruits of the Spirit is joy, for goodness sake. En av åndens frukt er jo glede. You're supposed to be happy. Vi skal være glad. How many are happy tonight? Hvor mange er glad i kveld? Okay, some of you need to tell your face about it. Nu må bare fortelle ansiktet om det. Se det til Trine. It's like last night during the healing meeting. I kept saying to them, are you excited? And so we had a word of spirit, are you begeistret? They'd say, yes, I'm excited. Ja, jeg er begeistret. Oh, okay, good. You could have fooled me. Du kunne lurt til meg. So are you happy tonight? Er du glad i kveld? Give Jesus a big shout then. Rope for Jesus! Oh Lord, we love your kingdom, we love your ways. We love how you move among us and how you fill us again and again with your spirit. Men ens er hvordan du lever iblant oss og fyller oss på ny og på ny med den hellige ånd. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Et ferdighet, sannhet og glede i den hellige ånd. That's what we're... Needing and wanting to know. Det er det vi trenger, det er det vi lengter etter i kveld. Have your sweet way among us, Father. Gjør det som du vil, Gud. Now let's just hold our hands out and wait for him. Bare stikk ut dine hender nå og vent på Herren nå. Hold your hands out like you're going to receive a precious gift. Bare stikk ut hendene som om du skulle motta en dyrebare gave. And wait on him. Og bare vent på ham. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Hellig ånd, kom. Come to me. Kom her. Fill me again with your love. Kom til meg og fyll deg på ny med din kjærlighet. With your joy. Med din glede. With your peace. Med din fred. And begin to breathe it in. Bare begynne å stemme. Begin to drink it in. Drikk det inn. Increase it, Father. Come more, O oh Lord. Mer, Herre. We need you, O oh God. Vi trenger deg. We need your joy, your din, life, your peace. Din glede, din kjærlighet, din fred. Keep taking it. Just a few more minutes here. I thought said no minute to tell about time out. Wow. Come on, Martin. Give give him some right here. Give him some. Where am I Mayor Hera. Stretch out your arms. Mayor. 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 Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't know anyone who works harder than Steve does. He's just... If he's not... Translating or organizing, he's up there playing the drums. It's amazing, isn't it? Ah. Mm. Mm. Mm.
Now it's my turn. Your turn. Yeah. Boo. Oh, yes, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Oyster, for coming. We... Oh, Just line goodness. up if you want to interpret. Yeah. We could pray for the interpreters as they come up, couldn't we? <laughs> Fill him, Jesus. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, there is such freedom that comes in the joy of the Lord. Så det är en frihet som kommer med glädjen i Herren. We, I want to, in just a few minutes, I want to speak to you about the importance of experience. Om en liten stund så vill jag tala till er om betydningen av erfaring. And this is both important individually and also nationally. Det är viktigt för oss som enkelt människor men också nationalt. So that as a nation you can step into your destiny. Så att vi som nation kan komma in i det Gud har för oss. And bring revival to Europe and the and the west rest of the world. Och bär med oss väckelse in i nationen och ut i Europa. And revival looks like this in, in when it's full blown. Och väckelse ser ut på följande måte när det är full blown revival is beyond way beyond man's control. Uh, en sån väckelse i full skala är en mye större än det vi kan fatta med vår, våra hoder. And wonderful things happen to the lives of people. Och fantastiska ting sker i människors liv and families. Och familjer and nations och nationer and cities och byer. And that's what we want for this earth, isn't it? Och det är det vi önskar för den jorden, är det inte det? So keep drinking, won't you? Så fortsätt att dricka. Don't ever stop. Inte slut med det. Because as you drink of the Holy Spirit, för när du dricker av den heliga ande, it nourishes you. Så ger det dig näring. Very deep level. På ett djupt nivå. You become like a plant that has adequate water. Du blir som en plante som har riktig mängd vatten. You know, a tree with no water soon dries out and shrivels up. Det är tre som inte får vatten, det torkar ut och och vissnar. But we want to be like trees planted by the river. Vi önskar att vara träd som är plantat vid elven so that we can drink of that sweet wonderful river. Så att vi kan dricka av den elven. There is a river that never shall run dry. Det är en elv som aldrig ska gå torr. That's the river of God. Det är Guds elv, livets elv. Lord, just move over your people again. One more. Bara beveg dig över över ditt folk igen, Herre. Fall upon us with your grace and your mercy. <laughs> Fall upon us with your grace. We drink of you. We drink of you. We drink of you. We drink of you. What we're doing right now is perhaps the very best use of our time. Det är det är den bästa måten vi kan bruka tiden vår. Waiting on God in the presence of God. Och vänta på Gud i Guds närvaro. Yeah. All kinds of wonderful things happen to people. Och alla slags förskälliga fantastiska ting sker. Yes, Holy Spirit. Ja, Helgon. Yes, Holy Spirit. Ja, Helgon. Someone uh, is getting a healing right now of a stomach condition. Det är här som blir helt bredd akkurat nu. Det är ett problem med magen. A serious condition in your stomach. En allvarlig situation med magen. Um, you get a lot of pain with it. Yeah, I think you're in pain right now. Du får mycket smärta med det. Jag tror du har smärta akkurat nu. Can't eat a whole load of things. Yeah. Can't eat many foods. Det är många ting du inte kan spisa. God's touching you right now. Gud rör vid dig akkurat nu. As you, as you forgot about it, you just started to love on him. The Holy Spirit came on you to heal you. När du glömde på glömde det så kom den helande till dig och du Han bytte det där. Helt bättre. I tried. Very good. I tried. Very good. If you have a problem in your stomach, stand up. Det är ett problem där bra lite med magen så rejs upp. Rejs upp. Stomach problems. Magproblem. So you put your hands up in the anointing for a moment. Reach right into the oil of heaven. 
Hopefully it's get them good over. and oily with his presence. Now then, bring your hand down and place it on your stomach. And just say, pain, go. Smart to go. In the name of Jesus. Yes or no? <clears throat> We take it now. Oh, Holy Spirit, we love the way you do things. We absolutely love the way you do things. So, is this lady your friend? Do you know her? Ask her to come out a minute. Come on, dear. Come. How long have you had problems with your stomach? How long have you had problems? Can you tell me? <laughs> Feeling lame from your waist down. Yeah, when I five years old, and so many, so many psychic things from. Just take it, right? Yeah. Just take your healing. Right? Stretch your hand toward her and bless her tonight. Skal vi bare række hende mod den nu, så vi synger vi hende. It's the love of God. Just, just. Det er Guds kærlighed. Just become aware that His love is all around you. Right here. It's a free gift that He's giving you. Thank God for you. This healing is your free gift from your Savior's love. We bless your heart and your stomach and all your own body to be pain free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How many of you have pain right now in, oh. your, in your stomach area? How many of you have pain right now in your stomach area? You did, dear. What now? When you drink coffee. When you drink coffee. Oh, did you ever think you'd quit drinking coffee? Har du slutt, tenkt på å slutte det ikke i kaffe da? Nei. <laughs> Fill her up, Lord God. Fill her up for, right here. Fill henne for. With your wonderful anointing, let it come. En vidunderlig salvelse. Ok, I want to get that one with the stomach condition that was on the Lord's heart just a moment ago. Jeg vil gjerne få tak i det mennesket som hadde en magetilstand som lå på Herrens hjerte for Please noen øyeblikk siden. Please don't be shy. There's a miracle ikke, for you. Ikke vær flau, for det er et mirakel som venter på deg. Where are you? Just Hvor er du? Du har en... Yeah, there can be several of them. Det kan være flere. Well, three or four of you, come to the front. Tre eller fire, kom fram. It's easier for us. Thank you, Lord. Takk, Herre. You know, wherever we start in healing, whether it's with a stomach condition or heart condition or backs or legs or, or um, hearing problems or whatever it is, 
it always branches out into more and more things. So Jesus healed everybody. Vi har sett hur vi startar när det gäller olika sjukdomar, om det är hjärta eller mage eller hode för olika ting så. Ehm, um, jag har lust att snacka norsk. Ja, så vi måste speak now each other. Ehm, har varit genom många påkänningar i livet mitt. I've been through many stressful situations in my life. How long have you had it? Hur länge har du haft det? Det kommer sån av och på. Det kan så annan. Jag blir pressad i situationer. Jag pressad i situations. Eh, uh, grund av uh, jag ledde ett fängelsearbete. Så jag startade Alfa. I led a prison work and we started Alfa course. Och jag leder i PF Rogaland i Stavanger. Vad är det för nå? Det är fängelsearbete. Ja, yeah, the prison work in in this district she is leading that. Så so, uh, så jag känner att det var mycket press på mig från alla kanter. Så det blev en lot of pressure från different uh, sides. Och då slår det till. Han är slår till. Strikes. Strikes. Ja. Mm. You know, life is full of stress, isn't it? Livet är fullt av stress, är det inte? Jesus is the answer. Men Jesus är svaret. You say to him, Lord, have mercy on me. Se till om Herren miskunde över mig. Have mercy on me and touch me now. Miskunda över mig och röv mig nu. Father, I pray. Far jag ber. That this pain will come out. Att den smärtan vill gå ut. The stress will go out. Att stressen vill gå ut. Everything of fear. Allt som har med frykt att göra. Pressure. Och press. Come out. Kom ut. And let the peace of God fill her now. Och låt Guds fred fylla henne nu. By the anointing, Jesus. By the salvation, Jesus. By the anointing. By the salvation, Father. Deeper, 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 deeper. Father, give her more than she can possibly contain. Far, give her more than she can take out. Let the fire of her relationship with you burst into flame once again. Let the fire of her relationship with you burst into flame once again. Let the fire of her relationship with you burst into flame once again. Let the fire of her relationship with you burst into flame once again. So the joy, so glad, are that. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. For all of these dear ones who, for all of these sadder, stomach problems, take authority over it. Magi problems. Just stretch your hands towards. But they can then out with them. Lord, I love what you do. Herre, jeg elsker det du gjør. So mysteriously, so wonderfully by the Holy Spirit. Så underfullt ved den hellige hånd. Let your power come on them. La din kraft komme over dem. We take authority over sickness. Vi tar autoritet over sykdom. The chemical imbalance. Og kjemisk ubalanse. Pain. Smerte. Come out of them. Kom ut av dem. Let the healing love of Jesus flow in. Lad Jesus helbredelse kærlighed flyte ind i dem. Thanks, O Lord. Tak, O Herre. Oh, thanks. How long have you had pain, my dear? Hvor længe har du haft smerte da, min kære? Jeg har haft kræft for 15 måneder siden. I had cancer 15 months ago. Men jeg har haft fine prøver efter det. En god test efter det. En et ubehag i fordøyelsen som ikke har undersøkt. Men det er noe i digestjonen som ikke er pleasant. Og hun har ikke vært til eksaminasjon for det, og hun føler det. Så hun vil oss prøve for det. Legg hånda di der hvor problemet er. Ja, det er her. Bare velg et sted. You know the power of the Holy Spirit is very real. Vet att den helgons kraft är väldigt virklig. It's the power of God. Det är Guds kraft. It's not mind over matter. It's not positive thinking. Det är inte positiv tankegång. It's real. Det är virklig. Fix her, Father. Ordna upp för henne, Far. Fear comes out. Frykt kommer ut. 
And peace flows in. O fred flyter in. Yeah. By the anointing. Ved salvelsen. By the power of God. Ved Guds kraft. Yeah. There. Just take it. Just bare ta det, bare ta det. Thank you Lord for all of them. Tack Herre for Can you just all of them. Line up here. Kan dere stille dere på en rekke? Yeah, yeah, this is good. Just no, come bra. this way. Det er bra. Just Snu dere mot plattforma. I want to pray for you all. Jeg vil be for dere alle sammen. See when when it's you and I that is feeling poorly and sick and afraid. Når du og jeg kjenner oss dårlige og syke og redde. Then we get in touch with how serious the issues are. Da får vi berøring med hvor alvorlig dette er. You know, there's a whole range of things here, everything from drinking too much coffee like we heard to someone who's really worried about cancer. Det er alle aspekter er noen som ikke tåler kaffe og andre som bekymrer seg for kreft. God cares about each and every one of you. Og Gud bryr seg om hver og en av dere. It's his will and his plan and his purpose. Det er hans vilje og hans hensikt å helbrede deg. I believe it's the will of God to heal everyone, generally speaking. Jeg tror det på generell basis er Guds vilje å helbrede alle. And tell us your time to die and go to heaven. Til du skal dø og gå hjem til himmelen. How do I know that? Hvordan vet jeg det da? Because Jesus healed everyone. Fordi at Jesus helbrede alle. And he never did one thing out of the will of God. Og han gjorde aldri noe utenom faderens vilje. He healed everyone. Han helbrede alle. All ten lepers. Alle ti spedalske. All who came to him. Alle som kom til ham. All who came to him were healed. Alle som kom til ham ble helbreda. That's all the faith they needed. Det var all tro de trengte. Just to turn up to the meeting. Det var å bare møte opp på møte. I want you to quit trying to be healed right now. Og jeg vil at du skal slutte å prøve å bli helbreda akkurat nå. And just rest in his love. Og bare hvile i hans kjærlighet. Healing is a free gift, just like salvation. Helbredelse er like en gratis gave som frelsen er det. You cannot try to be saved. Du kan ikke prøve å bli frelst. It doesn't help. Det hjelper jo ingenting. You just come to the place where you accept it. Nei, du kommer til det stedet at du bare aksepterer det og sier, ok, jeg tror. That settles it. Og da er det greit. I'm having it. Da får jeg det. And so with healing. Sånn også med helbredelse. Jesus paid for your healing. Jesus betalte for din helbredelse. It's his gift of love to you. Det er hans kjærlighetsgave til deg. Just say, all right, I'll have it then. Så si, greit, da tar jeg imot det da. And rest. Og hvil. And let his power come upon you. Og la hans kraft komme over deg. Father, fill them now. Far, fyll dem nå. Fill them. Fyll henne. Again. Igjen. Fill them now. Fill them now. Fresh fire on them. Frisk ill over them. A fresh and a holy fire burns. Frisk og hellig ill som brenner. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. More, Lord. Mer, Herre. More, Lord. Mer, Herre. More, Lord. Mer, Herre. Fill them up with your love, Father. Fill them up with your charity, Father. We ask you that every one of them. We pray that every one of them. Yes. Every single one of them. Every one of them. By the supernatural power of God. By God's overnatural power. Take that healing. Ta imot den helbredelsen. I Jesu navn. Ill på deg. Friskt over deg. Bare hvil i hans kjærlighet akkurat nå. Hvis Jesus var her i kroppen, og han ba for deg, he would be smiling at you. Da vil han smile til deg. Og si at dette går bra. And then power would flow through you. Also, will the kraft flow to you as he laid his hand on you? Moran lost in the hand upon thee. And now he's delegated his work to you and I. And now he's delegated his work to you and I. And now he's delegated his work to you and I. And now he's delegated his work to you and I. And now he's delegated his work to you and I. And now he's delegated his work to you and I.
More Holy Spirit, I put your anointing on them. Mer helgon, jag lägger din salvelse över dem. And I tell cancer to come out. I tell fear of it to come out. Och frykt ska komma ut. And we say, may the love of God go in. Och vi säger, må Guds kärlek flyta in. Healing you. Fyller dig. Healing you. Helbreder dig. As you rest in it. När du vilar i det. Oh God. Oh Gud. We love this Lord. Vi älskar detta herre. Bless her. Välsign henne. Give her hope. Ge henne hopp. Hope Lord God. Hopp herre Gud. Mm. Keep coming Holy Spirit. Fortsätt att kom Helgon. Keep coming Holy Spirit. Fortsätt att kom Helgon. Keep coming Holy Spirit. Fortsätt att kom Helgon. Fortsätt att kom. Father, let another fresh wave of your presence go through the room. Far lån ny frisk bölga av ditt närvaro fyller rummet. If someone with a blood condition, är det någon som har en blodsjukdom? There's something wrong with the blood count in your body. Är det någon med blodprocenten i kroppen din? Father, we speak a blessing to that blood condition in Jesus' name. Vi talar helbredelse över den blodsjukdom. And let the blood come absolutely normal. Och låt blodet bli helt normalt. The white and the red in proper balance. Vi vita och blodläggande i riktig balans. Fortify their blood, I pray. Styrk det, Gud. In Jesus' name. I Jesu namn. You have a problem with your blood. Har du problem med blodet? Blödningar hela tiden. Every day you have to go to the doctor because of bleeding. Yes, and now not every day to the doctor, but I have bleed all every day. Just look to Jesus for a moment. Several times, several times every day. Blöder flera gånger om dagen. Father, I pray that your holy presence will flow through this woman. Far jag ber att ditt heliga närvaro ska flyta genom denna kvinna. And yet you will have mercy upon her, heal her now. Vad du med skund över henne och elbreda henne nu? By your power. Med din kraft. More. Mer. More than she can possibly contain. Mer än hon är möjlig för henne att ta emot. We tell all the bleeding to stop. Och vi säger att all blödning stans. And the fear. Och frykt. Of cancer and all of that. Och frykt och allt det där. Lös her. Lös henne. We bless you. The life of Jesus Christ. We will sing to you with Jesus Christ's life. Blowing through your body. So flyt it in on your body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want to just get that one with a blood condition. Can I get a man who has a blood condition? A blood condition that is not right. I'm not sure if it's leukemia or if it's. It's from the leukemia or if it's. It's from the leukemia or if it's. Some kind of a blood condition. And blue, till stop. Yeah, here's two people here. Yeah, two people. Two here. What's wrong with your blood, sir? What's wrong with your blood? I was a drug addict and. What narcoman? Many years ago. Many years ago. So I got this hepatitis C. So I got hepatitis C. And I got the worst condition. So it takes to cure it normally to take one year, and with. Depressions and these things. Normal at all. So I just like hepatitis C. Hepatitis C. Did you ever forgive yourself for being a drug addict? Har du tillit att själv för att vara narkoman? I think it's still more to do. Fortsatt nu igen där. Why don't we just decide tonight? Så kan vi inte stämma oss för det. Give yourself a gift that you don't deserve. Kan du ge dig själv en gåva som du inte själv förtjänar? Your own forgiveness. Din egen tillgivelse. You see, as long as we are in agreement with the accuser, så länge vi är ena med anklagaren, we actually bind ourselves to the justice level. Så binder vi oss själ till domen. That's what AJ was talking about this morning. Var det AJ som kom i förmiddag var du här då? Just came. Kom akkurat. 
Say it with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I choose to forgive myself for my drug addiction years. For my drug addiction years. And I surrender at the foot of the cross. Och jag lägger det ner vid korsets fot. I surrender at the foot of the cross. Have mercy on me. Miskunda av mig. Heal me now. Och helbred mig nu. Amen. Amen. Now just receive a free gift here. Ta emot en gratis gave nu. No striving. Ikke no streving. Don't try to believe. Ikke prøv å tro. Just rest in his love. Bare hvil i hans kjærlighet. Oh Holy Spirit, oh, go into his liver, go, in go into hans. his bloodstream. Oh, i blodströmmen hans. Let your power flow all Lad through his body right now. Let your power flow all through his body Wash him clean. Wash him clean. Of everything of hepatitis. For all that has hepatitis. By the anointing. By the salvation. Do you feel that going into you? Do you feel that it goes into you? What's it feel like? What do you feel, Stella? Totally numb. Is it good numb? Is it a good numb? Wonderful numb. A happy numb. That's the presence of God on you. It's God's nearness over you. Just because He loves you. Just because He loves you. Oh Lord. You are very great. Du är väldigt stor. All of it goes now, I pray. Går nu be jag. In the name of Jesus. I Jesu namn. And just fill him up. Bara fyll honom. With love and joy and peace, the like of which he has never known. Kärlek, glädje och fred som han aldrig har följt för. Lord, he was searching for love in all the wrong places. Han har sökt att det kärlek på alldeles gärna stenar. Trying to find. Peace and love through drugs and all the other stuff. All the other stuff. All the other stuff. Now he's yours. And now he's yours. And let him have the highest of highs. Love for the highest of the high. Do you know there's no high like the most high? Det står det inte nå sån höjd som den högsta. Oh. <laughs> More, Lord. Mer, Herre. Some people wanted to ask Carol, why do you why do you blow on them? No one lured to for blows or upon them. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You need to blow on it. Because there's a fire in there that's you know quieted down. You Give him a double. Ye on the double end. Lord God. Hare God. And you. Oh, thy. Morgan, what's wrong with your condition, Morgan? I had a very rare blue value this year. Very bad blood value since this fall. For a high white value. Too high on the white egg white. Too high on the white cells. And the red are too low then. No, the red are normal. The white are too high. You are normal, but the white are high. You know, I think you're the one I've been fishing for. I think you're the one I've been fishing for. What I love about words of knowledge is it always means a miracle for the person. It's amazing to me. Det som jeg elsker med kunnskapsord er at det betyder at det er et mirakel for den personen det gjelder. The heart of God is to heal us all, but. Gud ønsker å brede oss alle. We need to start somewhere, so it kind of gets us going. Men vi må begynne et sted, sånn at vi kan fortsette. Do you know that it's not the will of God for your blood to be out of balance? Vet du at det er ikke Guds vilje at blodet ditt skal være i ubalanse? If we were going to preach on healing tonight, I'd be telling the people that 
the message of Jesus was that the kingdom of heaven is within reach. Vi ska skulle få synt om Hebrews i kväll så vill jag sagt att Jesu budskap var att himlens rike är när. Do you know there's no sickness in heaven? Vet att det är ingen sjukdom i himlen. There's no bad blood in heaven. Det är ingen dålig blod i himlen. I'm not sure there's even any blood in heaven. Vet inte om det är någon blod där i det hela tatt. But the will of God is to heal you, isn't it? Men Guds vill är att helbreda dig, är det inte? Put your hand on your stomach. Bara lägg henne dina på magen din. Holy Spirit, I ask you to go into the very marrow of her bones. Hela hon är bred att du ska gå helt in i benmargen hennes. Where blood is made. Det var blod skapas. And we tell this condition to stop it. Och vi säger till den brorsjukdomen att du ska stoppa. You stop it. Stop. As the power of God and His kingdom goes through that spine, Guds kraft och hans rike går igenom den ryggraden, through these bones, in i bena, everything that Father wants out, allt som Fadern vill ha, comes out now, kommer ut nu, and everything He wants in, och allt som han vill ha in, love, joy, peace, healing, blessing, flows in, kommer in, now, flyter in nu. Or let her feel your strength supernaturally. Herre, vi känner din kraft övernaturlig, din styrka. Let her sense the working of the Holy Spirit within her body, right within her bones. Att den helige ande arbetar in i hennes kropp. I speak health to all your bones. Talar hälsa till alla dina ben. Where blood is made. Var blodet blir skapat. In Jesus name. I Jesu namn. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How are you doing? What's going on with Daya? Get it checked, then. Get it checked, won't you? Go for check, Ada. Wow. Steve, you're still out. Steve, you're still out. Steve, you're still out. <laughs> he said, "I'm enjoying this so much. I don't want to get up." I said, "I'm enjoying this so much. I don't want to get up." Well, thank God. Thank God. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's give the Lord just a wave of thanksgiving. Let's Och nu är de dagarna här. Väckelsen har kommit. We're in it. Och vi är i det. We're part of it. Vi är en del av det. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tack, Herre Jesus. Wow. Now give some of that to your friend again. Ge nu av det till vän din nu. Ask them what they need a miracle for. Maybe you could stand up to do this. Och så kan skall skall du skall rejsa. There's faith in the room for healing. Come on. Låt oss rejsa oss. Det är en bredvid i lufta här. Och spör vän din vad men vän din tränger för nånting. We believe you, Lord, for miracles. Vi tror det här är för mirakler. At the hands of ordinary people, ordinary Christians. Genom hemmet är vanliga kristna. And we pray and we bless one another. Vi ber och vill signa varandra. In the name of Jesus. I Jesu namn. Your healing love. Helbrelses kärlighet. It's our inheritance, O Lord. Det är vår arv, O Herre. It's our inheritance. Det är vår arv. And we have it. We'll have it. Och vi arver. Ja.
Amen. Okay, you can take your seats once again. Okay, nå kan dere sette dere. We wanted to receive a mission offering tonight. Vi skal ta opp et misjonsoffer i kveld. And um, I know that most of you have asked the Lord what he would have you do. And Og de fleste dere har spurt herre, hva vil du at jeg skal gjøre? Whenever it's offering time, så når det er offertid, Um, that's one of the times we need to remind ourselves that it's this is a happy time. We need to smile. Da må vi minne oss selv på at det er en lykkelig okay. tid, så vi skal smile da. Now here's why. Og her er grunnen. God does not need your money. Gud trenger ikke pengene dine. How many know that? Hvor mange vet det? He doesn't need your money. Han trenger ikke pengene dine. He has plenty of his own. Han har masse selv, da. What's the point then? Så hva er poenget What's da? What's the purpose? Hva er formålet? The purpose is to allow you to share in the blessing and in the inheritance. Form- formålet er at du skal delta i velsignelsen og i arven. I was reading in scripture just the other day, really. Jeg leste i ordet her om dagen. Where it says, uh, Joanna... Uh, well, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, was one of the ones who contributed to the ministry of Jesus. Hvor det står at Joanna, kona til Cusa, hun bidro til eh, Jesu kasse. Two women. To kvinner. And many women, and many others really. Mange kvinner og mange andre også. Contributed to the ministry of Jesus. De ga penger inn i Jesu tjeneste. And they're mentioned in Scripture. Og de nevnes i Bibelen. They gave the Lord of their substance towards His ministry to Israel. De ga av det de hadde inn i Jesu Kristi tjeneste. Now how many of you know Jesus didn't really need money? Mange her som vet at Jesus trengte egentlig ikke penger, han. Uh, there were one time when he went uh, into the, the, to the synagogue in Capernaum and they wanted temple tax. Var en gang når han gikk inn i synagogen i Capernaum, og så ville de ha tempelskatt, da. And they didn't have any cash on them, so... Så hadde de ikke noen kontanter, da. He told Peter to go fishing. Så han sa at Peter skulle ta seg en fisketur. And the first fish you catch, I have a coin in its mouth. Og første fisken han drar opp, har en mynt i munnen. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Det er ganske utrolig. So, yeah, and whenever he needed it, the Holy Spirit provided for him, as he does for you. Så når han trengte det, så tilveibrakt den hellige ånde, og det gjør den hellige ånde også for deg. What was the purpose of those women contributing to his ministry? Så hva var formelen med at disse kvinnene ga inn i Jesu tjeneste, da? He wanted them to share in his reward. Han ville at de skulle delta i belønningen hans. And so he gives you an opportunity. Så nå gir han deg mulighet. And whenever you have an opportunity to sow into ministry, an anointed ministry og alt det når du har en mulighet til å så inn i salvede tjenester you, you can be really happy about that. da skal du virkelig være glad for Because å få lov til å være med på det you share in the reward. fordi da får du del i belønningen you get to be a stakeholder you get to be a participator du blir en stattholder du blir en deltaker and I think somehow offering time has been spoiled a little bit by Yeah, some questionable tactics and abuses. Og jeg tror at uh, dette med offring har på en måte blitt litt ødelagt for grunn av at det har blitt brukt feil metoder og taktikker. And mismanagement even. Misspending of og, og, og til og med misbruk av penger som har kommet inn. And I think all of us here, from Steve and Martin and our team, you know, before God we do the best we can. Men jeg kan si på vegne av Steve, Martin og team her at innenfor Gud så gjør vi det beste vi kan med pengene. To be good stewards of his money. For å være gode forvaltere av hans penger. But that's not the point. Men det er ikke poenget da. The point is, as you give, poenget er at når du gir, it will be given unto you. Så vil det bli gitt tilbake til deg. Good measure. Et godt mål. Pressed down. Shaken together. Rystet og stappet. Running over. Så det flyter over. The blessing of God. Guds velsignelse. Isn't it wonderful that we have such abundance in Norway? Er ikke det herlig at vi har sånn overflod i Norge? They tell me Norway is one of the most prosperous nations in all of Europe. De sier at Norge er et av de rikeste landene i Europa. Isn't that wonderful? Det rikeste. Are you happy about that? Er du glad for det? Are you? Er du det? I think that's great. Jeg synes det er herlig. I mean, it went from 100 years ago, I think, the poorest nation in Europe. For 100 år siden var det den fattigste i Europa. 
Only to realize that God had deposited oil just offshore for you. Bare for at se det at Gud har placeret olie rett ud af for kist. Oil and gas and other things. Olie og gas og andre ting. And he did it at the foundation of the earth just to bless you. Og så gjorde han det i jordens grundvalde bare for at være signet ved det. So now he says, hey, if you're if you're interested. Så nu siger han du, hvis du er interesseret. You can share in ministry. Så kan du være med at delta i tjenesten. Even with your finances. Selv med pengene dine. So whenever you give, so you ask what you give. Don't give grudgingly or sparingly. So ikke gi gjerdig eller klagende. God loves a cheerful giver. For Gud elsker en glad giver. We want to take a lot of these young people that are with us and and others to the mission field. Vi har lyst til å ta med oss mange av disse unge folka som er med oss og andre med ut til misjonsmarken. And tonight's offering goes 100% to mission work through the ministry of Carol and I. Og offer i kveld går til misjonsarbeidet som Carol og jeg driver. And so I'm going to ask us to pray. Så nå skal jeg be at vi skal be. And say, Lord, what would you have me do? Herre, hva vil du at jeg skal gjøre? And then we'll simply do what he says. Is that okay? Og så bare gjør det ganske enkelt som han sier. Er det greit? So let's pray together. Så la oss be sammen. Father, we thank you for the blessing on this nation. Far, vi takker deg for velsignelsen som er over denne nasjonen. And on these people. Over disse menneskene. Maybe there's some who need a job in this room. I ask you to find them work. Kanskje det er noen som trenger en jobb i dette rommet. Jeg ber deg at du skaffer en jobb til deg. And bless them. Og velsign deg. But Lord, let each one give. Men Herre, la hver og en gi. As the Spirit of God would direct them. Ettersom den hellige ånd leder den til. So that we can give in faith that stretches us. Så vi kan gi i en tro som strekker oss. And then receive your amazing blessing again and again. Og så ta imot din utrolige velsignelse igjen og igjen. Takk, Herre. I Jesu navn. Amen. Amen. All right, so can you tell us how... Skal vi si hvordan vi skal gjøre dette praktisk? Det er to betalingsterminaler midt på bak. Og så er det en på hver side. Og så vil det... Der kan jeg bruke kort. Og så kommer det også rundt bøtter. Friskt over deg. Alf. Let's stand and worship together again. La oss stå opp og tilbe sammen. Blind eyes. 
Wow, okay, you can take your seats. Before Pastor John comes and speaks tonight, we just want to mention some products. How many of you enjoyed Kelly's worship all this week? Isn't she incredible? Should we have all of our CDs, I think, out there, but I just want to highlight two of them. This one is called I Fix My Eyes On You, and it's live worship. Denne er en, en live uh, tilbedelses-CD. It's recorded live at TACF at a conference just like this. Som er tatt opp på en konferanse i Toronto. And the song Ke- Kelly just sang tonight, and the one we started with, that's on there. Og sangen som Kelly nettopp sang, og som vi startet med, den er der blant annet. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this one's really anointed. <laughs> den er skikkelig salva. <laughs> Uh, this one is a studio album that um, Kelly went in and recorded. The Lion Spilt is studio. And the song that I know you all love, Grace Like Rain, that's on there as well. Oh, Grace Like Rain, I also put that. One of the uh, other worship leaders that we have at TACF, who's a dear friend of ours, is uh, Robert Oji. En av de andre lovsangsledere som vi har i Toronto har også kommet med en CD. And you will just absolutely love him. He's an incredible worship leader. Og han er en utrolig lovsangsleder. And that's another one that you can listen to. Det er en annen. Robert Moses o- Robert Moses OG. Robert Moses OG. Yep. And then we also have a DVD and CD box set that's available. Also har vi komplette set på CD eller DVD. Every session that has been going on in here is recorded to DVD. Så alt som har skjedd her inne har blitt tatt på DVD. And you need to pre-order these because obviously we don't want to make um, lots of them and then not everybody takes one. Men disse må forhåndsbestilles, så vi kan få lagt opp eksakt antall. Så det er en DVD-set, og det er en CD-set. Så det er en boks med DVD'er, og så er det en boks med CD'er, så kan du velge hvem du skal ha. Og CD-set har alle workshopene, og alle de som har vært i andre steder. Og alle workshopene som også har vært i andre rom, er også med på CD'ene. Og til slutt, dette er en utrolig hjelpfull teaching fra John og Carol. Og til slutt så er det en veldig god undervisning av John og Carol. John hadde en workshop i går på, hva er alle manifestasjonene om? I går så hadde John en workshop som handlet om hva manifestasjonen er til for. Why do people fall down? Hvorfor faller folk? Why did that lady just scream at the top of her voice in the middle of worship? Hvorfor skrek denne damen plutselig så veldig høyt under lovsangen? And then this afternoon I did a workshop on prophetic symbolism. Og i ettermiddag hadde jeg en workshop om profetisk symbolisme. And both those topics John teaches on this double CD. Og begge disse emnene så underviser John på denne CD-en. How many of you have got friends or family who are not too keen about Toronto and the manifestations. Welcome to the club, we're going to get t-shirts at the back. One of these CDs is really helpful for you to listen to and to be able to respond to any of the questions that they have. And that's it. Very good. Thank you, Alan. You, you neglected to mention that uh, the CD from Kelly Warren and the one from Robbie Oji sort of goes together yeah, as a set. They do. They complement each other very well. Well, so they they come as a set also. You're going to you see more of those two together, I'm you sure. Of well, there we go. <laughs> Turns out Robbie is Kelly's new boyfriend. So Robbie, if you're watching, we love you, man. We really, really do. I, uh, I would like to, just before we get into the message, just mention uh, some of the opportunities that we have with TACF and with Catch the Fire Ministries. I think one of the, one of the greater ones here for Norway is what's happening with... Uh, the, the OASA ministry that you're all familiar with and with Einar and all of his team. Just stand up for a moment, Einar. Før vi går inn i budskap, skal jeg nevne forskjellige muligheter du har for å være med på ting som skjer i Toronto, men også gjennom OASA-bevegelsen av Einar og hans team. And they are opening up, soaking meetings all over Norway, and I think this is tremendous. De kommer til å åpne opp for soaking-møter over hele Norge, og jeg synes dette er helt herlig. 
And uh, it's an opportunity for ordinary people to get involved in ministry where God can use little old you. Och detta är er en möjlighet för vanliga kristna till att bli uh, delaktig i en tjänst där Gud kan bruka lilla dig. Uh, a part of what we want to deposit in all of you this week is the fact that you can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit effectively. Og en del av det som vi önskar att överföra till dig denna vecka det är er hur du kan börja att betjäna i den helgons kraft. And so uh, find out about that. Så finn ut av det. And if you need to get a hold of uh, Einar, how would they do that Einar? Do you have an address? Deg, Einar, har du noe email address? E-mail eller? Det kan sende en mail til meg. You <laughs> can mail me. <laughs> Veldig enkelt å huske. Einar krullalfa oase.no Så um, har vi fått också ganska många in på listan som önskar att komma igång med soaking runt omkring och um, vi kommer till att kontakta dig via nätsidan vår och liknande ting. Så följ med på www.oase.no. Där vill stå lite mer information och länkar vidare till ting som sker. Och vi ska ha den nästa konferensen. Den är er i Oslo. Oslo. 3 till 7 september i Brettvet kyrka. Det blir en sån International Leader School of Ministry som vi hade i Imekirken i januar. Och så hoppas vi på att komma igång runt om i regionen och ha tre dagars soaking school. Vi hoppas i löp av ett år kanske arrangera åtta slike på olika ställen i Norge. Så följ med. Det kommer en soaking school när dig. Yeah, there will be a soaking school near you. Ja, det kommer att komma en soaking school den där dig. So we're looking forward to coming back to Norway, Oslo in uh, September. Så vi ser fram till att komma tillbaka till Oslo i september. And then we'll have a conference in the Oslo area next spring again. Nästa vår ska vi ha en uh, konferens i Oslo. And hopefully we can announce those dates by tomorrow. Och så hoppas vi att vi har datum för den konferensen i morgon. I also want to mention that our premium service is available over the internet. Jag har lust att nämna det att vi har en tjänst på internet som heter Premium Service. And so um, it's $10 per month and uh, what that does is it gets you in touch with all of the teaching that's going out, out of Toronto. Det kostar cirka 50 kr i månaden och det det gör att du kan få del av all undervisning som går ut från Toronto where you can watch conferences live. Du kan se på konferenser direkt överförd på internet. Including this one. Also denna. And I think that was pretty cool. This is also cool. While well, Carol was speaking down here this afternoon, I was in the room getting ready. At uh, Carol var nere här och talade i eftermiddag. Jag var på rummet och gjorde mig klar. But watching her on on my computer. Men så såg jag henne på datorn min på internet. And I just thought that was really cool. This is also ganska cool. And so people are getting into that uh, premium service and taking advantage of it. Så folk melder sig på internetsida och går in på den premium eh service och får en del av det. Access the whole library there that we've had for. Då kan du gå in i hela biblioteket i arkivet och hämta ut. About 7 years of uh cirka 7 år tillbaka i tid av konferenser och ting som Already that you can watch. Allerede som ligger ute som du kan se på. And for some of you who may want to help us on a on, on a financial basis but more long term. Och visst är någon som har lust att hjälpa oss ekonomiskt men mer långsiktigt. We have what we call the Catch the Fire World Changers. Så so har vi Catch the Fire World Changers. And more and more we have many folks that are saying I want to help you with $25 a month or more. Och mer och mer så har vi människor som säger jag vill hjälpa till med 120 kr i månaden eller mer. And the reason for that is because we want to reach the entire world for Jesus. Och grunden till detta är att vi önskar att nå hela världen för Jesus. So in India for example. For example in India. We went there last December. I förra december så var vi där. And we had three leader schools that happened at the same time. Och då hade vi tre ledarskolor som gick samtidigt. And uh, I think it was the one of the English schools that had sown into that that made that mission possible. Och det var en av de engelska skolorna i England som hade sådd in i detta och gjorde detta möjligt. Well, it was just such a wonderful breakthrough in India. Och det var ett sånt härligt genombrott i India. Pastor Joseph 
Apostle Yu said, he said I, I want you to come back and do 20 schools at the same time. Han sa jag vill att det ska nå göra 20 skolor på samma tid. So 20 schools. So 20 schools. So we're thinking we got to pull together 20 teams now. Men vi har 20 team satt samman. So not only do we need your financial help, inte tränger vi bara den ekonomiska stöd. We need your help. Vi tränger din hjälp. Come with us and teach some of this stuff. Bli med oss och undervis nu av detta. And so we're having a school this August. So i August ska vi ha en skola. That is to train people to do international leader schools. For att träna folk så att de kan göra dessa internationella ledarskolorna. The healing of the heart component into the nations and the pastors of the nations. Och bringa detta till hjärtat in i nationer och in i pastorer. Pastor Joseph in India is a man who has 20,000 churches and house churches. Pastor Joseph in India har 20,000 menigheter och husmenigheter. That's their 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 whole mission called uh, New Life Fellowship in India. 20,000 churches and house churches. Och och missionen heter New Life uh, Fellowship i India som alltså 20.000 menigheter och husgrupper. And he said we've never heard the like of this stuff in all of our years. Och så säger de i alla år vi har hållit på vi aldrig hört sån undervisning för. See the church doesn't know how nice God is. Du känner de mesta parten av menigheten vet inte hur härlig Gud är. Like with an orphan spirit they keep trying to serve him and serve him and serve him. Så i en föräldralös ande så prövar de att tjäna honom och tjäna honom och tjäna honom. Which is good. Och det är bra. But he just doesn't want servants. He wants sons and daughters who love him. Han vill inte bara ha tjänare, han vill ha söner och döttrar som älskar han. And that understanding and that revelation changes everything. Och den förståelsen och uppenbarelsen förändrar allt. So that is the thrust of our world changer partners. Så det är det dessa world changers partners är med på och hjälper oss. Fund that vision for revival to the pastors of the world. Finansiera detta i och i veckelsen vidare till pastorerna i världen. And it's amazing to me the doors that are opening there. Och det är troligt vilka dörrar som öppnar sig sinse. In two weeks we go to Indonesia. Om två veckor ska vi resa till Indonesia. And Gordon Robertson of the 700 Club Ministries that many of you may know of. Och Gordon Robertson i 700 Club, han som kanske flera känner. We were just with him last week in Virginia Beach. I Virginia Virginia Beach var vi samma han förra uke. But he's bringing all of their leaders from the Pacific South East. Men han bringer samma alla ledarna i runt Stillehavet och Sydostasia. To come to Jakarta, Indonesia, so we can have a leader school with those people. För att komma till Jakarta, Indonesia, så vi kan ha en ledarskola för dem. And it's amazing. This is a ministry that won 35 million people to Jesus last year. Detta är troligt för att en tjänst som vann 35 miljoner människor för Jesus i fjol. The 700 Club. 700 club. And uh, now they want to know more about the Father's love and how to move in the power of the Spirit. Och nu vill de veta mer om Faderns kärlek och hur de beveger sig i andens kraft. I'm telling you folks, something is up. Jag säger det till folk att det är något som sker. God is on the move. Gud beveger sig. He, he is doing what he promised in the book of Joel. Han gör det han lovade oss i Joel. He's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Han öser ut sin ande över allt kött. Including Norway. Norge inkluderat. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Så gör det klar, gör det klar, gör det klar. And so that's why we have all these training events going on. We want people to get that revelation in the heart. Så därför vi har dessa träningscenter för vi vill att folk ska få det in i hjärtat. We have our school in Toronto, our school of the heart for young people 18 to 35. Så har vi skolan i Toronto, school of the heart för folk från 19 till 35 år. How many here have been to that school? Många har gått på den skolan. One, two, three. Yeah, it's five months long. It's absolutely life-changing. Fem månader lång, helt livsvandrande. So send your children and grandchildren over. Så send barna och barnebarna dina dit. And we'll sort them out for you. Så ska vi reda dem ut för dig vi. And they'll come home loving their mom and dad. Så kommer de hem och älskar mamma och pappa och säger. Wow, how sweet it is. Hur vi dundar läcker det. And then we're training our uh, soaking center leaders. Och så tränar vi ledarna för soaking centerna. And uh, building that network and they're learning how to cast out demons. Och bygger nätverk och de lär hur de ska kasta ut demoner. Hjälpa de sjuka. Uh, minister counseling. Och och hur de ska prophesy over people. Och profetera över folk. Interpret dreams. Och hur de tolkar drömmar. And all that stuff as we do more and more of those seminars. So 
I wanted you to be aware of that. Så vill att du ska vara klar över att vi har såna ting. One other thing I'll mention. En ting till ska jag nämna. Uh, we we do outreaches and trips from time to time. Det är att vi tar turer. We just had a, a conference at sea on a cruise ship for the third year. För tredje år på rad så har vi någon konferens på ett cruiseskip. It was amazing. Det var helt otroligt. We did two outreaches, one in Saint Lucia. Så vi tog missions hundreds of people healed at that. Sankt Lucia och hundratals av människor helbredda genom det. As all the people on the ship went out to pray for the the sick and uh, invite the lost to receive Jesus. Når folk på cruiseskipet gick i land och bad för de sjuka och inviterade folk att komma till Jesus. I want you to imagine what this looks like now. Så vi nu vill att du ska tänka dig hur det ser ut. Princess cruise. Princess cruise. Their newest ship. The nyaste båten dens. The is it the Star Princess when it was Star Princess. Star Beautiful boat. Princess nydlig båt. 3000 passengers. 3000 passagerare. 1000 were us. 1000 var oss. Ooh. Did we have fun or what? Tror vi hade det gøy eller? And uh, it's just really great. We have a captive audience for a whole week and we share the Lord with them and Det är helt härligt för att de kan inte komma av båten så vi delar Herren med dem. Anybody here on the cruise with us? Var det någon som var på cruise med oss? Kelly of course and Carol. Kelly, Anyone else? Carol och uh, andra. We almost went with Norwegian Cruise Lines again, but, we're so we went Norwegian cruise lines. but it now went with Holland America, so there we are. Would you come if we went with Norwegian Lines? <laughs> also next year in March, March, I think it's the 2nd to the 13th. We're, we're taking a trip to Israel, doing a major conference in Jerusalem. How many would like to come on that? It's going to be a good time. So check our website, won't you? TACF.org. And then this um, May and June, Och nu i maj och juni for three weeks, i tre uker we have an outreach going to South Africa har vi en till Sydafrika in Mozambique och Mozambique and where we're taking a, a, a whole load of people with us och då tar vi massor folk med oss and so those, these people are going to visit Heidi Baker's mission in Pemba Mozambique och de ska besöka Heidi mission uh, Heidi Baker's mission i Pemba i Mozambique and then go to Kruger Park. Så ska vi till Kruger nationalpark. Like a safari with the lions and safari the elephants. Safari och se på löver och elefanter. All of that. It's Alt really det wonderful there. Det är verkligen fint där alltså. And then we're going to Johannesburg. Ska vi till Johannesburg? For a leaders school of ministry which you will also take. For a leaders school of ministry. And it ends with a conference. Och så avslutar vi det med en konferens. So it's an amazing tour. Så är det en otrolig resa det då. If anybody's interested in that. Så är det någon som är intresserad i det. Talk to Nicola and Ricky and the different ones at the book table. And we can tell you about that. But how many like to go and see Heidi and see South Africa? Och vem har lyst til å se Heidi Baker og det hun står i Heidi Baker og det hun står i Would that be amazing? Vil ikke det vært utrolig? Yeah, so. I know it's not cheap. <laughs> With all the airfare and meals and everything in there, it's something like thirty-five hundred dollars. But det er ganske mye penger, det er nesten 20 000 kroner. Men like said, Norwegians are blessed these Men, days, aren't sier, they? Men som vi sier, nordmenn er så signa, så dette går bra. Take some of that oil money and ta noe av de oljepengene og bli med. I'm one of those uh, outreaches. That would be en av de absolutely great. Vi vil bli helt herlige. All right, let's open our Bibles together. La oss åpne Bibelene sammen. And I want to speak to you today about the importance of experience. I dag så skal vi snakke om viktigheten av å erfare. Now why this is necessary is because experience has gotten a bad reputation. Og grunnen til at dette er viktig det er at erfaring har fått et dårlig rykte på seg. And all of us know that, you know, there can be bad experiences. Og alle vet vi at vi kan ha dårlige erfaringer med ting. Yeah, there can be bad experiences in terms of a relationship with a boy or a girl. Ha dårlig erfaring i en relasjon, i et kjæresteforhold for eksempel. But there's also good relationships, isn't there? Men det er også gode relasjoner, er det ikke det da? And I just trust that your marriage would fall in that category of being a good relationship. Og jeg stoler på det da, at ekteskapet ditt er en sånn god relasjon. Carol and I got married about 28 years ago. Carol og jeg giftet oss for cirka 28 år siden. 
and we've lived happily ever after. Och vi har sett lyckliga ut efter det. It's just amazing. Det var det helt otroligt. I love being in love with my wife. Jag älskar att vara förälskad i kona. So see, there are good experiences. Så det var goda erfaringar. And God has good experiences. Och Gud har goda erfaringar. And the word of God is full of good experiences. Och Gud står fullt av goda erfaringar. And I want to talk to you about that tonight. Och det ska jag snacka om ikväll. The church has suggested that charismatic experiences are to be avoided. Menigheten har antydet att karismatiska erfarenheter det är er bäst att bli undgått. Och be careful with all that stuff. Och passa för allt det grejen där du. Be careful of getting too emotional. Och passa för att bli för för mycket känslor involverad. Be careful of getting too excited. Och bli för begeistrad passa. After all those people that get really excited, you know, they're just a emotional basket cases most of them. För du vet att de flesta som har massa känslor det är bara någon sån där känslor i rotehuvud. Prescribed manner of behavior when you come to church. Så vi har en sån tillärt uppförsel när vi går till menigheten. When you come to church the first thing is shh. När du kommer till menigheten så först shh. Just come in quietly. Och ska vara stilla. It's a bit like a library. Det är nästan som ett bibliotek, vet du. Sit down. Sätt dig ner. And take your place. Och finn platsen din. Just sit orderly. Och bara sitt onkli pen. There you go. And watch the time. Och så följ med på klocka. One hour is enough. I en timme är nog. Out you go. Och så må du gå. I see that is so far removed. Det är så långt ifrån. From what a meeting that Jesus led looked like. Ett möte som Jesus led. What do you think a meeting looked like where every person was healed? Och som tror det möte var alla människor blev helbredda på så ut. Demons crying with loud voice came out of many who were possessed. Och demoner kom ut med höga skrik av de som var besatta. So if you went to a church that where there was no screaming aloud, så vi gick i menet var det inte var tillåtet med skrik. You couldn't really have Jesus as a speaker. Då kunde inte Jesus bli med till som talare i vart fall. Because there was screaming in his meetings, lots of them. Apparently. And they were excited both for their freedom and for their healing and all kinds of reasons. The joy of the Lord was their strength. Och de var begeistrade både för sin befrielse och sin helbredelse och glädjen i Herren var deras styrke. And so part of what the Lord has asked us to do is to turn this around and let God's people begin to have fun in church. Så den delen som Gud har bett oss om det är att snu på detta här och låta Guds folk bli förlösta i att ha glädje på möten igen. And think about it logically. Tänk logiskt på det. Does Norway play football? Spelar Norge fotboll? Do they play it very well? Spelar de bra? Well, supposing Norway was playing Germany. Ja, vad tänkte jag visst Norge spelade mot Tyskland då? The crowd is packed the 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 stands in the stadium. Och stopp fullt på stadion. And in the last 5 minutes of the game. Och de sista 5 minuterna av kampen. Norway kick the winning goal. Så kommer vinnemålet från Norge rätt i nätet. And the crowd went wild. Och publiken blev var helt ville. Right? Stämmer det? Would they? Vill de då? How many think the crowd would go wild? Många tror att folk blir varit helt ville då. And they would all say this is appropriate. Och så vill de säga att ja men detta passar sig. I've never heard anybody caution you about going to football games. Aldrig hört någon som snackar om det att gå på fotbollskamp. Now be careful brother when you go to football games. Passa in när du drar på fotbollskamp. Don't get caught up in all the hysteria and the excitement. Inte bli fångad in i hysteri och begeistringen då du. Because hysteria can be very dangerous. För det kan bli för farligt. Och det excitement will can upset you and emotionally. Och begeistring kan sätta gärna känslor i sving. Nobody does that when they go to a football game. When they go to a football game, they yell and shout and they cheer for their team. När de går på fotbollskamp så skriker de, ropar och hejar på laget. And no one warns them of the dangers of getting too emotional. Och ingen som advarar mot faran om att bli för känslomässigt involverad. But when you come to church, när du kommer till menigheten, oh, be careful. Oh, pastor. Of that group. For den gruppen där. They're very emotional, you know. Ja, så känslomässigt involverad. And I've heard stories of what happens. Och jag har hört historier om vad som har skett där det. Are you getting this? Skönner du detta här? Now which is more important? Vad är viktigast då? 
The fact that Norway would kick the winning goal. Faktum er at Norge tar og skårer vinnemålet. Or that your name is written in heaven and the Holy Spirit is filling your life now with His power. Eller at ditt navn er skrevet i himmelens bok og den hellige ånd fyller deg nå. My goodness. Herlig land. If you can get excited about anything, you ought to be able to get excited about church. Hvis du kan bli begeistret for noe, så må du være begeistret av menigheten. And it's eternity. Dette er evighet. It lasts forever. Det kommer til å være evig. Oh my goodness. Og herlig land. I think they're getting it. That's a really more talking. There's a wonderful book called The Fire Within. Det er noe som heter å ha ild på innsida. It's written by a Catholic priest by the name of Father Thomas Dubay. Og det er en mann som heter Father Thomas Dubay, han er katolsk prest. And he writes about the life of St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, two mystics. Han skriver om to som er inne i mystikken som heter den hellige Teresa Avila og den hellige Johannes av Korset. And these people were described, he was describing the visions and the revelations of the Spirit that Teresa and John were having. Og han beskriver altså visjonene som disse Teresa og John opplever. And in the first chapter or so, he has a wonderful explanation of the, of what experience and how important experience really is. Og i det første kapittelet så beskriver han disse vidunderlige erfaringene om hvor viktig erfaringer er. And he says some people are afraid of experience. Og så sier han noen er redd for erfaringer. They caution you about experience. Og de advarer deg mot erfaringer. When actually all of life is experience. Når faktisk hele livet handler om erfaringer. All of life. Alt i livet. How do you know whether or not you like strawberries? Hvordan vet du om du liker jordbær eller ikke? Do you study them? Studerer du det? Do you read about them? Leser du om jordbær? Do you survey your friends and say how are they? Undersøker du blant vennene dine og spør hvordan er det med jordbæra? Or do you simply experience one? Eller bare erfarer du ganske enkelt et jordbær? How many like strawberries? Mange er som liker jordbær her. How do you know? Hvordan vet du at du liker det da? You ate one. Du spiste et. Imagine if you were so afraid. Tenk deg hvis du var så redd. What if it's sour? What if it's bitter? What if it makes me sick? I'll ask your friend. No, they're good. Do we have one? See, that's life. It's based on experience. All of life is based on experience. And some of them are bad. But most of them are good. And so that's what we're pressing into here. Now, we have a friend named Dr. Ralph Neighbor. Vi har en venn som heter Dr. Ralph Neighbor. He's really the father of the cell church movement. Han er far av denne cellegruppemennigheten. Or the grandfather, really. Eller bestefaren, kan vi si. And he was speaking to us one time about the three ways of learning. Og en gang så talte han til oss om tre måter vi kan lære på. Human beings learn in three ways. Mennesker lærer på tre forskjellige måter. The first is cognitive. Det første er kognitiv. Cognitive learning. Kognitiv læring. The second is psychomotor learning. Det andre har med med motorik å gjøre. The third is effective learning. Og det det tredje har med at vi lærer gjennom when it comes to learning anything. Det som påvirker vår oppførsel. When we learn anything, we learn by those three ways. Så lærer vi på disse tre måtene. So cognitive learning is where. Kognitiv læring. You maybe you sit in a classroom. Det er at du sitter i et klasserom. You have a textbook. Og du har en bok. You memorize. Og du du you use logic and reason. Memorerer og det er logik. And you learn. Og du lærer på den måten. And it's good. Og det er bra. You can learn the Bible that same way. Du kan lære Bibelen på samme måte. You can study it. You can read it. Studere, lese. You can memorize it. You can understand it. You can use logic. Stå det, bruke logik. But that's not the only way. Men det er ikke den eneste måten. The second way we learn. Den andre måten vi lærer på. Is psychomotor learning. Det har med den fysiske motorikken å gjøre. Your motor skills interact with your brain and your... Dine motoriske evner og hjernen din og reaksjonene dine på dette. And you need practice. Og du trenger øvelse. So, if you're going to learn to ski. Skal du lære å stå på ski. What does that look like? Hvordan ser det ut da? You buy a book. Du kjøper en bok. Skiing for dummies. Og så å gå på ski for idioter. 
Read the book. Läsa boka. And you're ready for the slopes. Och då är du klar att stå ut för bakken. No, no, no. Nej då. More to it than that. Det är mer än det. You practice so du your motor skills dig, will learn how to do it. Så att du lär dig Similarly, du if you're going to learn to play golf, you know. Och du ska lära dig spela golf. You have to do it and do it and do it. Och då måste du göra det och göra det. Until your motor skills learn the coordination and all the rest of it. Din motoriska evne lär sig koordination. Learning by practice. Du lär dig genom att och praktisera. Similarly with a piano. Samma med att spela piano. Or an oboe. Eller en obo. You don't just read a little book about it and away you go. Du läser inte bara en liten bok. You don't just memorize something and off you go. You have to practice. Eller bara memorera det. Nej, du måste. Until your motor skills come in line with your. Du måste träna och träna så att de motoriska evnerna kommer i samsvar med de andra. And so we learn also through practice and practice and practice. Så vi lär er genom att träna och träna. But there's a third way called affective learning. Så är det något som har med en att vi lär er genom något som påverkar vår uppförsel. And this is learning by life's experiences. Genom livets erfarenheter. Where you have an experience in life. Hur du har en erfaring i livet. Good or bad. Eh, dålig eller god. And you learn from the experience. Och så lär du av den erfarenheten. For example. For example. Touching a hot stove. Hvis du berör en varm ugn. How do you learn don't touch a hot stove? Och så lär du oss att inte ska röra vid en varm ugn. Your mother says, "Don't touch it; it's hot." Mora, de säger inte rör den. Den är varm. Everybody learns, right? Alla lärer då. Wrong. Nej. What happens? Det som sker. Mother said, "Don't touch it." Mora säger inte rör den. And then you touched it. Och så rör du det. And you burned your hand. Och så brant du handen. Now you've learned. Nu har du lärt. Don't touch that thing; that's hot. Inte rör den. Den är varm. You just experienced something. Du har inte bara fått någonting. That wrote a message on your heart. Som skrev ett budskap på ditt hjärta. Now that was a bad experience. Det var en dålig erfarenhet. But there were good experiences. Men så har vi goda erfarenheter. Like eating a strawberry. Som att spisa jordbär. Or Kissing your wife. Eller kyssa kona. Did you ever wonder about that? Har du lurat på det någon gång? Why do two thinking human beings put their mouths together? Hur då kan två tänkande människor ta läpparna samman? See, if it's just cognitive learning, it just makes no sense at all. Det är kognitiv lärning. Det blir inte nåt förnuftigt där. The best reason is it feels good. Bästa grunden är att det känns gott. It's not logical. Det är inte logiskt. But it feels good. Men det känns gott. A lot of theologians, you know, they pride themselves on how logical they are. Många teologer är så stolta av hur logiska de är. I said to a guy one time, okay. En gång så sa jag till honom. You kiss your wife. Okay. Kysser du kona din? He said. Of course I do. What's that got to do with so anything? Så var det med saken era. Well, you just told me you don't do anything that doesn't make common sense. Ja, men du sa ju nettopp att du you gjorde inte något som inte har med förnuften att göra. Du tycker på något visst inte är förnuftig. Why would two thinking people put their mouths together? Varför slänger två tänkande människor läpparna samman? <laughs> well, he didn't have an answer for me, but Han hade inte svar klart han. Anyway, we left him. <laughs> men vi bara överlåt han till sig själv där. <laughs> In his dilemma. Så stod han i dilemma sitt. But effective learning, you see, it affects you. Men detta är alltså en lärning som påverkar dig. And so it is with God. Så är det också med Gud. There are experiences with God that you and I need to have and receive. Det är erfarenheter med Gud som vi tränger att ha och som vi tränger att ta emot. I mentioned the other day the Bible is a book of experiences. Här om dagen så nämnde jag att Bibeln är en bok full av erfarenheter. Full of experiences. Full av erfarenheter. Let's look at some of them. Låt oss se på någon av dem. Abraham. Abraham. God gave him a covenant. Gud gav honom en pakt. What did that look like? Vad såg det ut som? They cut the animal in pieces. De skärpte upp djuret. And then God says, "We'll make a covenant together." Och så sa Gud, "Nu ska vi göra en pakt sammen." And the, the the message was, if we don't keep our promises, then let happen to us what happened to those animals. Budskapet var, hvis inte vi håller pakten och för varandra, så låt det ske med oss som nu skedde med djuret. Between the pieces. And Abraham walked between the pieces, and then God walked through them. And His presence, like a smoking lamp and a burning furnace, walked through those pieces. The presence of God walked through those pieces. Igenom Guds närvaro gick igenom dessa kötstycken. And he saw that manifestation of God. Och han såg den där manifestationen av Gud. And experienced it. Och erfarte det. Visually. Visuellt. And he smelled it sensually. Och luktade den genom sinnet. He heard it with his senses. Med sinnet. Experiencing God. Han erfarte Gud. 
What about Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord? Hva med Jakob som kjempet med Herrens engel? And he was different after that, wasn't he? Og han var helt annerledes etter det, var han ikke det? He walked with a limp. Han vandret haltene rundt. So the Lord touched him on the hip and said, remember this Herre, day. Herren slo på hofta, så sa han på denne dagen. Hvilken erfaring det var. Can you imagine wrestling all night with an angel that turned out to be the Lord himself? Kan du tenke deg å bryte deg hele natt med en engel som viser seg å være Herren selv? Think about Moses. Tenk på Moses. Exodus verse chapter 3 verse 2. Andre Mosebok 3, 2. Burning bush. Brennende busk. Here he is. He's been out in the desert now for 40 years. Her er han. Han har vært ute i ørkenen i 40 år. Egypt was a long time ago. Egypt, det var lenge siden. He's looking after sheep now. Nå har han blitt servietter. 80 years old. 80 år gammel. And he sees a bush on fire. Så ser han en busk som brenner. That's not burning up. Men den brenner jo ikke opp. And the angel of the Lord starts speaking to him out of the burning bush. Og Herrens engel begynner å tale til ham ut fra busken. What kind of an effect do you think that had on Moses? Hvordan effekt tror du det hadde på Moses? How many know it affected him? Mange vet at det påvirket han, ja. That's what we call affective learning. Det er det vi kaller læring som påvirker. Learning that affects you. En læring som påvirker deg. He experienced the burning bush and the voice of the Lord. Han erfarte den brennende busken og Herrens røst. You know, in English we have a little proverb that says, experience is the best teacher. Du vet at på engelsk har vi et ordspråk som sier at erfaring er den beste læremester. And so we're calling the church back into experiencing God. Så vi kaller menigheten tilbake til det å erfare Gud. It's not just a cognitive learning. Det er ikke bare en kognitiv læring. It's experiencing a person. Men det er å erfare en person. The living God. Den levende Gud. Let me go on. La meg fortsette. Samson experienced the great strength of the Holy Spirit. Samson erfarte den mektige kraften av den hellige ånd. Samuel in 1 Samuel 3:10 experienced the voice of the Lord calling his name. Samuel i 1 Samuel 3:10 erfarte at Herrens røst kalte på hans navn. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. For din tjener hører. Saul experienced the presence and power of God. Saul erfarte Guds nærvær og kraft. The Spirit came on him, and he was his heart was changed into the heart of another man. Ånden kom over ham, og han ble forvandlet til en annen mann. David in 1 Samuel 16:13. David i 1 Samuel 16:13. It says the spirit of God came upon him and remained on him from that day forward. Det står at Gud som kom over ham og forble over ham fra den dagen av. Elijah. Elia. Elisha. Elisha. Imagine that experience that day Elijah was caught up to heaven. Tenk deg den dagen og erfaringen når Elia skulle opp til himmelen. He's saying, I want a double portion of your spirit, your anointing. Så sier Elisha at jeg vil ha en dobbel del av din salvelse. Elisha sier, wow, that's, you've asked a hard thing. But if you see me go, it's yours. Nå ba du om en vanskelig ting, men hvis du ser meg reise, så er det ditt. All of a sudden. Horses and chariots of fire. Plutselig kommer det hester og ildvogn. He's caught up in a whirlwind. Han blir fanget opp i en virvelvind. A tornado, come on. En tornado. Took him up. Took him up. And the cloak of Elijah fell to Elisha. Elia som falt over Elisha. And he picked it up. Han plukket han opp. Walked to the edge of the Jordan. I love that story so much. Og så gikk han ved Jordans elvebred. He strikes the water. Og så slår han på vannet. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Er Herren Elias' Gud. The water's parted. Og vannet deler seg. And over he went. Og så gikk han over. All the others watching going. Og alle andre som... Oi vei! Som så på sin... Oi! The spirit of Elijah has come upon Elisha. Nå har Elias' sånn kommet over Elisha. Can you see, folks, this is a powerful, life-changing experience that happened to that young man. Dette er en kraftfull, livsforvandlende erfaring som skjedde med Elisha den dagen. It is so biblical. Det er så bibelsk. Look at Isaiah. Se på Jesaja. Isaiah 6. I kapittel 6. That whole chapter. Hele kapittel. In the year that King Uzziah died. I det året kom Uzziahs døde. I saw the Lord. Så så jeg Herren. He was high and lifted up. Han var høyt løftet opp. And his glory train filled the temple. Og hans herlighet fylte temple. And the place was shaken with his presence and with his power. Og stedet rystet ved hans nærvær og kraft. And I cried out, woe is me, I'm undone. Og jeg sa, åh, det er over med meg. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. For mine øyne har sett Herren, her skarenes Gud. It shook him up to the very core of his being. Han ble rystet i sine grunnvoller. 
He probably was not quiet. He was undone and var cried han, out. Han var nog inte stille. Nej, han var helt fallt i biter och bara ropte ut. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 9 he said I'm like a drunken man. Why Jeremiah? Because of the Lord and his holy presence. The presence of God is affecting him. Guds närvar påverkat han. And all of the prophets, name one. Profetene. Daniel and on and on. Daniel och så vidare. They were affected by the awesome power and presence of God. De blev påverkade av den otroliga kraften och påverkningen från Gud. John the Baptist. Johannes döpare. Jesus himself. Jesus själv. Peter, James and John. Peter, Jakob och Johannes. You know when you read the account in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 Luke 9:1. När du läser i Matteus 10:1 och Lukas 9:1. At the point where Jesus is wanting to multiply his ministry and give it away. Där var Gud Jesus har lust att multiplicera tjänsten och ge den över. Which by the way is, is what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do with you. Är det den Helgon önskar göra med dig? He saw that there was too many people wanting healing, wanting help. He can't take care of them all. They're like sheep without a shepherd. Han så att det var för många folk så att de var som får utan hyrde. Just imagine 10,000 people trying to touch you. Tänk dig hvis 10,000 människor prövade att röra vid dig. Think about it. Vad tänk på det? That's what Jesus was going through. Vad det Jesus gick igenom? We had an experience in Korea one time. Vi hade en erfaring i Korea en gång. I had to rescue Carol. Jag måste rädda Carol. Because she was just so flowing in the anointing and they all just wanted it. Hon var så full av salvelsen och alla ville ha det. Hundreds of people were trying to touch her. Hundratals av människor försökte röra henne. And they ended up just bruising her and tearing her and almost tore her clothes off. Och det nästan rev av henne kläderna till slut. And I sent about 10 ushers in to rescue her. Jag sent in cirka 10 mötevärd för att rädda ut. Carried her out of the crowd. Bara ut från mängden. You know Jesus had that happen a lot. Det hade stått med Jesus det. Why because his ministry was so powerful. Hur får för det hans stjärna var så kraftfull. People wanted to experience the life and healing of God. Folk ville erfara Guds kraft och helbredelse. And they were frustrated because they couldn't get to him. Och de var frustrerade för de kom inte fram till honom. To multiply this. Så han sa, nå er det tid å multiplisere det. Så han kalte de tolv til seg. Matthew 10, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, han ga dem makt. Og Luke 9, 1, sier han, Power, kraft, and authority. Oh, authority. How many think they probably just stood there quietly? How many are some throughout the bar stood there still? And said, "I don't feel anything to you." I feel like you know you're there. Thanks, Jesus. I talk Jesus, but yeah, yeah. I think they got blasted. Yeah, I think that they were completely overmanned. The experience of Moses. Imparting to the seventy elders in his day, they prophesied all day long and just until sundown. Skulle skulle gi det videre til de sytti, så profeterte helt til solen ned. The New Testament doesn't say what happened. New Testament foreteller oss ikke hva som skjedde. But I think if Jesus calls you aside, men jeg tror at hvis Jesus tar dig til side, and gives you power. Och ger dig kraft and commissions you with authority. Och befaller dig och ger dig autoritet. He probably wiped you out. So, so will you have to be a temple? How many agree? Probably something blasted them into a whole other dimension. No, som bara skev dem helt ut i en annan dimension. And then he sent them out right after that. Och så sent han dem ut rätt efter det. Go bring the kingdom. Gå och bring in riket. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Det ska vi snakka om imorgon. And here's what to do: tell people heaven's within reach. Så ska de göra det. Himlens rike är när ska de se det för? Helt bred i syke. Cleanse the lepers. Rense the spedalske. Raise the dead. Opvek the døde. Cast out devils. Og kast ut demoner. Freely of your seed, freely give. Det som du har fått gratis skal du gi gratis. Imagine he. This is a beginner's list. Dette er begynnerlista. They've never done it before. De har aldrig gjort det før. And raise the dead is on the list. Og opvek the døde står på den lista. They were energized. 
by the supernatural power and presence of the Holy Spirit. De fick en energi via det övernaturliga närvaro och kraften av den heliga. Changed their lives that day. Som förändrade deras liv den dagen. And it went on and on and on from there. Och så gick det vidare och vidare och vidare från det. What about Saul of Tarsus? Vad med Saulus från Tarsus då? Saul. I wonder if he believed in experiencing God in church. Lurte om han trodde på att vi skulle erfara Gud i menigheten. Be careful, Saul. Pass dig själv. Stay away from that Damascus road. Håll dig borta från den där Damaskusvägen. They get all emotional. De blir så känslomässiga där. I've heard stories about those people. Jag har hört historier om de folka där. Well, he didn't listen. He went on the Damascus road. Ja, han hörte inte. Han drog på Damaskusvägen. Och power hit him. Kom kraften he over struck, he fell to the earth and blinded for goodness sake. Falt i jorda og, og, og hylte. Hæ? Han ble blind, ja. Ja, han ble blind, unnskyld. Han er en annen hylte også, det vet vi ikke. How many know that would modify your behavior somewhat? Mange er det som vet at det vil modifisere din oppførsel. Experiencing the power of God is normal for us. Where for God's kraft, it is normal. Where did we ever get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? Where did we get the idea that we weren't supposed to experience anything? culture of unbelief. Jag tror detta kommer från teologisk kultur av vantro. Where somehow or other we have settled for you know just the academic side of things. Hur på ena måte så har vi slått oss till ro med att det är en god med med detta här och och den kognitiva läringen och without the experiential side of things. Och kutta ut den erfarenhetsmässiga sidan. Without being affected by the touch of his power. Och vi har inte blivit påverkade av effekten av kraft. We've said things like no, 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 all that is in the past. Och vi har sagt nej, 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 det där hörde fortid att. All the miracles, all God interacting with people like that, that all went away, died out with the last apostle. Alla mirakler och allt det att Gud samhandlade med människorna på den måten, det dödade ut med den sista apostlen. You cannot find one verse of scripture that teaches that. Det finner du inte ett bibelvers på som lär. Now some people say, "Oh, oh yes, I can." Also, I know some people they can. I've read about where whether there be tongues, they will cease. Det står att tunger ska upphöra. Whether there be prophecy, that'll fail. Profetier ska inte vara mer. But that same verse says, "Yes, but whether there be knowledge, it'll also pass away." Men det står också kunskapen ska bli bort. That verse is talking about. Ultimately in heaven. Det är varsågod snakkar om det enda som ska ske i himlen, var du inte tränger det. You don't need the, you know, the things that make it work on earth anymore. Du tränger inte det som gör att det ska fungera på jorden längre. It's all reached its fulfillment. Nej, för det har blivit fullfört. Can't find one verse. Finner inte ett vers. And yet the Bible is full of verses. The Bible är full av verser. Talk about the fact that God wants to meet with you now. Så snakkar om det faktum att Gud önskar att möta med dig nu, över och över igen. Now, how many of you have had people caution you about getting involved with charismatic things and with Toronto? Hvor mange har måttet advarsel for mennesker å bli involvert i ting som har med karismatikk å gjøre eller Toronto eller? These people are your parents sometimes. Problemet er at noen ganger så er det dine foreldre. Your children even, your pastor even, or people you look up and respect. Folk som du ser opp til og respekterer. But here's my question for you. Men her er min spørsmål til deg. What are your options? Vilket val har du då? Do you want to stay the way you are? Vill du få bli sån som du är? How many want to stay the way they are? Många vill stå förbli sån som du är akkurat nu. Or do you need more? Eller tränger du mer? So I'm talking about more of God, of course. Mer av Gud säkert. We want more of God. Vi vill ha mer av Gud. Why? Varför det? Because we want to be effective Christians. För vi vill vara effektiva. We want to affect our families in our cities. Påverka familjen vår och byn vår. We want to affect our nation. Och nationen vår. We don't want people to go to hell. Vi vill inte att folk ska gå till helvetet. We want them to be born again and come to Christ and be saved. Vi vill att de ska bli födda på nytt och komma till Jesus och komma till himlen. 
You see, a lot of the, the skepticism is fueled by little anecdotal stories. Mye av skepsisen blir nært ved sånne uh, anekdotiske historier. And these stories go something like this. Sånne historier som... Oh, I know somebody who went to Toronto. Og jeg vet om noen som dro til Toronto, ja. And they just went off the edge. Og de bare tippet helt. They've never been right since. Og de har vært helt gærne siden, de altså. You know, they're... This went wrong and that went wrong. Og dette gikk gærent for dem, og dette gikk gærent, og... And even if it were true, what does it prove? Selv om det var sant, hva beviser det da? See, we've had something like uh, three to four million people come. Mellom tre og fire millioner har kommet til Toronto så langt. It's going to be bound to be one that didn't do, do so good. Det må jo være en som ikke gjorde det så bra etterpå. What about all the others? Hva med alle de andre da? You see, we can't just take anecdotal stories. Vi kan ikke ta sånne anekdotiske historier. Uh, we need to go back to the Word of God. Vi må gå tilbake til Guds ord. And say, does the Word of God teach that there is more to come from the Holy Spirit? Og si, undervise Bibelen at det finnes mer å få av den hellige ånd. And the fact that there have been abuses and extremes, perhaps. Og det at det har vært ekstremiteter og misbruk, kanskje. Only proves that there must be a reality as well. Beviser bare at det også må være en virkelighet. Now we need to pastor those extremes. Så vi må være hyrder over dette som har med ekstremiteter å gjøre. Rather than cut it off. I stedet for å bare kutte det av, så må vi veilede. Because if we cut it off, we just may be missing what God is wanting to give us. For kutter vi det av, så kan vi blokkere oss om muligheten for det Gud ønsker å gi oss. They get anecdotal stories, perhaps. But they don't get that teaching from Scripture. De har kanskje noen anekdotiske historier, men de har ikke fått den undervisningen fra Bibelen. John chapter 14, verse 12. Johannes 14, 12. The words of Jesus. Jesu ord. Truly, truly, I say to you. Sannelig, sannelig, sier jeg dere. How many think this is going to be true? Hvor mange tror at det er sant da? He or she who believes in me. Den som tror på meg, han eller henne. The works that I do, det som jeg gjør, de er jeg gjør, also. skal også dere gjøre. Now we could stop right there. Skal vi bare stoppe det? And it would be absolutely amazing. Og det, det ville vært helt utrolig bare. You mean to say bare. I can do what Jesus did? Mener du at jeg kan gjøre det Jesus gjorde? Think about what he did for a moment. Ja, men tenk litt på hva han gjorde da. Raised the dead. Oppvakte de døde. Walked on water. Gikk på vannet. Quieted the storm. Og gjorde at stormen ble stille. Og stille og skaffet masse mat. Healed everybody in the meeting. Hebrede alle på møtet. Passed out screaming demons. Passed out hylende demoner. You know, escaped miraculously when the crowd was trying to kill him. Og unnslapp mirakuløst når hele folkemengden ville drepe ham. Og så videre, og så videre, og så videre. A supernatural ministry. Overnaturlig tjeneste. Where he was constantly in touch with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Han var hele tida i kontakt med den hellige hans nærvær. And he's saying, you can do it. The very way I'm doing it. Also, so that you can do it the back or something like that. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Genom den helige salvelse. Acts chapter one. Apostlenes gjerninger en. Verse four, five, and eight. Vers fire og fem og åtte. Let's turn there and read. Lås gå dit. Skal vi lese det? If you're enjoying this, say hallelujah. Og hvis du sætter hælde, så sig hallelujah. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized, immersed, saturated, marinated in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Vent på det som faderen har lovt, det som han sa, og som dere har hørt av meg. For Johannes døpte med vann, men dere skal bli... The amplification was mine. Ok, ok. For dere skal bli døpt med vann og marinert, og så videre sånn. Look at verse 8. La oss se på vers 8. Now, just, just look up here a moment. Se opp hit litt. Do you imagine that the final words of Jesus on earth were important? Tror du at Jesus siste ord her på jorda var viktig? He had a lot of things to say. Han hadde mye han kunne ha sagt. What about his final words on earth? Men dette var hans siste ord på jorda. Before the ascension. Før han ble opprykket. How many think they probably... Significant, important words. Mange tror at dette kan være noen viktige ord. Ok, let's read them. La oss lese da. But you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. Men dere skal få kraft i det den hellige ånd kommer over dere, og dere skal være mine vittner, både Jerusalem, hele Judea og Samaria, og like til jordens ende. Now when you're immersed in fire and in power, Når what does that look like? Når du blir oppslukt av ill og kraft, hvordan ser det ut? What kind of an experience is this? Hva slags erfaring er dette? See, that's what we're talking about. Det er det vi snakker om. We're talking about something that is so mind-blowing that it can never be the same again. Om noe som sprenger så totalt var fornuft. Alan gave his testimony about what happened when he met the Holy Spirit. Alan gav vittnesbyrdet sitt om hva som skjedde når han møtte den hellige ånd. He's never been the same again. Han har aldri vært den samme siden. And he wouldn't go back for anything. Og han ville ikke gå tilbake for hva det skulle være. I can say the same thing. Og jeg kan si det samme. Og den hellige ånd falt over meg. Thankfully it's again and again. It's not just once. Og så er det så herlig at det skjer igjen og igjen. Det er ikke bare en engangs foreteelse. It's a divine experience, a divine encounter. Det er en guddommelig erfaring og et guddommelig møte. People say, but what if I get a counterfeit? Men så sier folk meg, hva om jeg får en forfalskning? What if I get a counterfeit? Tenk hvis jeg får en forfalskning. Oh, I know. Oh, my. Hvordan vet jeg? Oh. Be careful. Pass det. Be careful. Pass det, pass det. See, and it and it sets you up for the fear of deception, which we've also talked about this morning. Og du skjønner at du blir lurt inn i denne frykten for å bli forført. None of us want to be deceived. Ingen som har lyst til å bli forført. Make up your mind, though. Men bare bestem deg for. I'm going to have more faith in God's ability to bless me. Jeg skal ha mer tro på Guds evne til å velsigne meg. Than the devil's ability to deceive me. Enn djevelens evne til å forføre meg. How did you get saved? Hvordan ble du frelst? How did you, how were you born again? Hvordan ble du født på ny? Were you afraid of a counterfeit? Var du redd for å få en forfalskning? What if I get something new age? Hva om jeg får tak i noe med new age? See, you had to come to the decision that no, I'm going to go to God for this. Nei, du måtte komme til den beslutningen at du ville gå til Gud. I'm going to ask for Christ to come into my heart according to the scripture. Kristus skal komme inn i hjertet mitt som Bibelen sier. And by faith I'm going to receive him. Og ved tro så skal jeg ta imot ham. Many of you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues already. Mange av dere har blitt døpt i den hellige ånd og talt i tunger allerede. How many have had that experience? Hvor mange har hatt den erfaringen? How did you get that experience? Hvordan fikk du den erfaringen? By fearing the counterfeit? Gjennom å frykte forfalskningen? Or by proceeding according to the word of God and faith? Eller bare fortsett som Bibelens ord sier i tro? You see, that's how we get everything from God. Det er sånn vi får alt fra Gud. We come like Luke 11, 11. Vi kommer som Luke 11, 11. And we ask our Father for bread. Og vi ber vår far om bread. And he will not give us a stone. Og han vil ikke da gi oss en stein. So, deal with your fears and your ungodly beliefs. Så ta hånd om dine områder av frykt og ugudelig tro. Og overvinn det. How? By reading the scripture. Hvordan? Ved å lese ordet. By listening to messages like this. Ved å høre på budskap sånn som dette. By hearing the testimony of trusted friends. Ved å høre vittnesbyrdet fra venner du stoler på. And by examining the abundant good fruit. Og gjennom å se på den overstrømmende gode frukten. So when you see everybody else is enjoying it, then you might taste it yourself. Så når du ser at alle andre nyter av det, så kan du jo smake selv. Now let me talk about the testimony of Gud. Witnesses for a moment. Vi må snakke litt om vittnesbyrdene fra vittnes. See, we have had somewhere between three and four million people come to Toronto. Du skjønner at mellom tre og fire millioner mennesker har kommet til Toronto så langt. Three to four million. Tre til fire millioner. I quit counting and trying to figure it out years ago. Jeg har sluttet å telle da, men for mange år siden. So here's the question. Så er det spørsmålet da. How do you get four million mennesker? International visitors. Hvordan får du fire millioner internasjonale besøkende? To come and visit your church. Til å komme og besøke menigheten din. I know. Jeg vet det. Let's have a clever little counterfeit. La oss legge ut en sånn listig liten forfølelse og en falskhet. Well, people think there's something going on. At folk tror det er noe som skjer. A little bit of sleight of hand here and there. A little bit of sleight of hand. Oh, some trilly kunst. A little trick here and there. A little trick, sir, or that. You know, a little bit of smoke and mirrors now and again. Some other rake or spider. See that? That would only last you. No. A week at best. They could, for the best, have a week. What's happened in Toronto is, it's been testimony-driven. 
Men det som har skjedd i Toronto, det har vært drevet av vittnesbyrd. People come and they get touched. Folk kommer da og blir berørt. And they tell their friends. Og så forteller de vennene sine. Now it's not Toronto we're glorifying, of course. Og det er ikke Toronto vi herliggjør her, selvfølgelig ikke. It's the Holy Spirit who has visited us there, as well as many other places. Det er den hellige ånd som har besøkt oss der, men det har han også gjort mange andre steder. And we want him to come to Norway in power and in love. Og vi vil at han skal komme til Norge i kraft og i kjærlighet. That's why we're here. Det er derfor vi er her. We want to leave a deposit of this fire. Vi vil legge et depositum. Set a fire in this land and let it burn. I dette landet, sånn at det kan brenne. And so this is testimony. Så dette er vittnesbyrd. We're in our 14th year of this. Vi er i vårt 14. år i dette. And people are still coming by the hundreds and the thousands. Og folk kommer fortsatt hundrevis og tusenvis. How many of you have been to Toronto? Hvor mange her har vært i Toronto? How many of you were blessed? Hvor mange ble velsignet? God got you there. Gud fikk tak i deg der. And your life has been changed. Og livet ditt har blitt forandret. So the testimony is you had a divine encounter with the Holy Spirit that blessed your life. Vittnesbyrdet er at du fikk et gudomlig møte med den hellige ånd som velsignet ditt liv. And it's not some clever little deception as people would have you believe. Det er ikke noen kløktig villfarelse som har kommet etter det. It's a genuine revival. Nei, det er en ekte vekkelse. And it's controversial, like all revivals. Og det er kontroversielt, men det er jo alle vekkelser. Do you know what? If everybody liked it, hvis alle likte det, it wouldn't be a real revival. Da ville det ikke vært en ekte vekkelse. Because there's never been one that everybody liked. For det har aldri vært en vekkelse som alle liker. They're always persecuted. De blir alltid forfulgt. And spoken against, just so you know. Og talt imot bare så du vet det. We had a sociologist come named Margaret Paloma in 1990, i 1995 og 1996 hadde vi en sosiolog som kom til oss. Hun lagde en undersøkelse som berørte tusen mennesker. Gjennomsnittspersonen var 40 år, hadde to års høyskole eller universitetsutdannelse. 94% av dem sa at som et resultat av det som skjedde med meg på gulvet, «I am more in love with Jesus than I have ever been in my life.» Er jeg mer forelsket i Jesus nå enn jeg har vært hele mitt liv? 88 prosent sa Jeg er mer begeistret over å fortelle min familie og venner om Jesus enn noen gang før. Så bare tenk litt nå. Hvis dette er av djevelen, noen må si at det ikke er noe som ikke fungerer. Da må noen si til han at dette funker dårlig. These people are falling in love with Jesus. For disse folk har blitt nevnlig forelsket av Jesus. See, it's the Holy Spirit. Det er den hellige ånd. Who's doing it. Som gjør det. And he always does. Og han gjør det alltid. And so, hallelujah for that. It's great. Hallelujah for det. Det er herlig. Some people say, but isn't it just sort of over the top? Emotionalism and hysteria. Så er det noen som sier at er ikke dette å dra det litt hver langt at det er masse følelsesmessig hysteri? No. Nei. It's excited people. Det er begeistret folk. More excited about eternal life. Som er mer begeistret over evig liv. Than they are about things like football. Enn de er i ting som fotball. Which is okay with me. Men det er greit det. I want to read a little portion from the introduction of This book we did called Experience the Blessing. Jeg skal lese litt fra forrøret i boka Experience the Blessing, Erfare velsignelsen. It's by a well-known theologian named Dr. Clark Pennick. Det er som heter Clark Pennick, som er en kjent teolog. Who, well, he's a well-known theologian. Han er en kjent teolog. He says, I have a picture in my mind about this gathering. I see an ocean of happy faces and a swirl of colorful flags and an outbreak of dancing. Han sier at jeg har et bilde i mitt indre om denne samlingen. Jeg ser et hav av lykkelige ansikter, masse fargerike flagg og dans. Og jeg hører sterk sang. Den der. When thousands are present, there is still the participation of everyone. Mens tusen er nærværende, så er alle delaktige. People meet God there in ways that contrast remarkably with the poverty of feeling and the fear of the body so prevalent in some established churches. Folk møter Gud der på måter som går imot på en utrolig måte den fattige følelsen og frykten i kroppen som er så etablert i de etablerte menighetene. 
Nowadays, play is reserved for the sports field. Som nå, eh, altså en, en lek som nu er reserveret for sportsarenaerne. The fun has gone out of religion, making it boring and rigid. Moroa har gått ut av religionen og gjør det trist og stift. The Toronto Blessing says that this does not have to be. Toronto Blessingen siger, at sådan behøver det ikke at være. Christianity can be alive and energizing. Kristenheten kan bli levende og fyldt af energi. And he goes on and on with a wonderful thing. The love of God is back. We celebrate a relationship that is not manipulative or legalistically slavish. It is mutual, interactive, and transforming. Vi feirer et et forhold som ikke er manipulativt eller lovisk, slavisk, men det er interaktivt og det er forvandlende. The very first uh, testimony in this book is from a dear friend now named uh, Dr. Scott McDermott. Første vitnesbyrd i boka kom fra en herlig venn som heter Dr. Scott McDermott. He is a PhD in the New Testament. Han har en doktorgrad i det nye testamentet. He teaches at Southern Methodist University. Han underviser ved uh, Sørsjøs Metodistenes Universitet. He has a great church now that he pastors. Han har en stor menighet som han er pastor for nå. Came to a meeting a few years ago to find out what's all this about. Kom til et møte for noen år siden for å finne ut hva alt dette dreide seg om. He says, quite frankly, falling down was not my thing. Og han sa for å si det rett ut, så var ikke det å dette min greie. But he was curious and came. Men han var nysgjerrig, så han kom. He came to a meeting I was doing in Florida with the charismatic concerns committee of all things. Så kom til et møte som vi hadde med den med de karismatiske bekymrede komiteen av alle ting. They invited me to come and share what was going on. Vi inviterte at jeg skulle komme der og dele hva som pågikk. And at the end of that sharing Scott was one of the ones who came for prayer. Og på enden av det at jeg på slutten av det at jeg hadde delt så kommer han for å få forbønn. He writes the next thing I knew I was standing in the brown, des uh, desolate Judean wilderness, not far from the city of Jericho. So he said that the next I had felt was that I stood in the brown and dead Judean landscape, not far from the city of Jericho. The Lord said, "I want you to be living water to the people that I have given you to pastor." Here he said that I will that you should be a living water for the people that I have given you to be a pastor over. Let that living water well up within your belly. La det levende vannet flemme opp i, i magen din. The scene changed and I found myself running on the road that leads from Jericho to Jerusalem. Nå forandret sceneri seg og jeg fant meg selv løpende på veien som går fra Jericho til Jerusalem. I began to cry for the sheer wonder of what I was experiencing and I asked the Lord, why is this so easy? Og jeg begynte å rope ut av bare undring over det som jeg erfarte og jeg spurte Herren, hvorfor er dette så lett? He replied, your heart is set on Jerusalem, so when your heart is on Jerusalem, the hills are light. Og Herren sa at ditt hjerte er satt i retning Jerusalem, og når ditt hjerte er satt i retning Jerusalem, så er høydene lette å løpe opp. As I lay there on the floor, I became aware that my legs and arms were moving as if I were actually running. Når jeg lå på gulvet, så ble jeg klar over at mine ben og mine armer beveget seg som om jeg faktisk løp. I didn't realize until later, but apparently my actions were not unnoticed. Jeg innså det ikke det for etterpå, men det var tydelig at folk la merke til min handling. The concern of others had grown so great that at least one person wanted to stop what was happening to me. Og bekymringen blant enkelte mennesker var så kraftig at det var et menneske som ville stoppe alt sammen. But I said, rather than stop it, let's ask him what's happening. Men jeg sa i stedet for å stoppe det, så la oss spørre han, hva er det som skjer? So I said, Scott, what's happening to you? Så jeg sa, Scott, hva er det som skjer? There he was on the floor. Der var han på gulvet. Lay down on the floor. Lå på gulvet. Running with all of his might. All sin kraft. He said, I'm running from Jericho to Jerusalem. Han sa, jeg løper fra Jericho til Jerusalem. Now he's a wonderful theologian, remember. Han er en vidunderlig teolog, husk på det da. I told the others, he's running from Jerusalem to Jericho. Så sa jeg til de andre, dere skjønner at han løper fra Jericho til Jerusalem. And then he said, I'm running uphill, but it's as though I'm running downhill. Og så sa han, jeg løper opp og bak, men det føles som jeg løper ned og bak. 
So I repeated it. I said, he's running uphill, but it's like he's so running downhill. Tog det så sa han löper upp på bakken, men det föles som han löper ner på bakken. And then I said to them, he is having a vision. Och så sa jag till dem att han har en vision. And they all went. Och alla. You know, Vincent Sinan was there. Det var bara en stillhet där. He said, I didn't know you could talk to somebody while they were having a vision. Jag visste att du kunde prata med någon när de hade en vision. I said, yeah. Så jo. You can. Det kan du. Scott came out of that. Scott kom ut av det. And he realized that he didn't go over the Mount of Olives and down the Kidron Valley and through the gates into the arms of Jesus. Och så insåg det att han gick inte över Olivberg och genom Kedron Hagen och in i Jesu armar. That's what he saw in the vision. Det var det han så i visionen. Well done, faithful servant. Väl gjort, du trofaste tjänare. But when he came out of it, men när han kom ut av det, he realized I'm not in Jerusalem. Så insåg han att jag är inte i Jerusalem. I'm in a hotel floor in Orlando, Florida. Det är på ett hotellgolv här i Orlando, Florida. And everybody's looking at him, you know. Och alla kikar på honom. And so he's all embarrassed. Så han blev så flau då. And he picked up his daytimer. Och så tog en dagboken sin. He picked up his Greek New Testament. Och så lilla Nya Testamentet sitt. And he tried to head for the door. Och så försökte han gå ut dörren. <laughs> and he couldn't line up the door. Men han klarade inte att finna ut var dörren var helt. So I says, Scott, why don't you just sit down and enjoy it? Så Scott kan inte bara sitta där och slappa och njuta det här. Don't worry about it. Inte bekymra dig över det här. His church is triple. Men det har tredubblat sig. What it was? Från vad det var. When that happened. När det skedde. He was just with us a couple of weeks ago. Han var sammen för bara för bara några veckor sedan vi var sammen. He's telling me that the most amazing healings are happening every Sunday in his church. Han sa att det otroligaste helbredelser har skett på vart söndagsmöte sedan. Och där anybody praying. Utan att någon ber. Just as they're worshiping Jesus. Bara när de står och tillber Jesus. The sweetness of his presence will come over the Methodists there. Så kommer sönnet hans närvaro in över metodisterna där. And people will be healed. Och folk blir helbredda. Somebody jump up screaming, I can heal. Och och hoppar upp och ropar. My back pain is just left. Ryggsmärtan min Förlåt mig akkurat nu. It's wonderful. Det är er vidunderligt. See, it's the fruit of revival. Det är er frukten av väckelse. It's the fruit of a divine encounter that changes your life. Det är er frukten av gudomlig erfaring som förvandlar ditt liv. Scott will testify to you. Och Scott har vi vittne för dig. In the year that John came to Orlando, Florida, I saw the Lord. I det året som John kom till Orlando så så jag Herren. And I ran from Jericho uphill to Jerusalem. Jag löp upp och bak ifrån Jericho till Jerusalem. And over the the Mount of Olives. Och över Oljebergen. Down the Kidron Valley. Ner Kedron Dalen. And up and through the golden gates that were open. Upp igenom de gyllene port som stod. And into the waiting arms of Jesus. Och in i Jesu väntande armar. Who told me, "Well done, som sa väl gjort, faithful servant, trofaste tjänare." And it transformed his life. Och det förvandlade hans liv. To this day, he can't talk about it without weeping and bursting into tears. Till denna dag klarar han inte att prata om detta här utan att tårarna kommer. You say, "Well, is he just overly emotional?" Ja, är han för förfärdsmässig? No, han är då, säger du? No, he's not. Nej, han är inte. It, it's not emotionalism. Det är er inte föleri. It's deep love and appreciation. Det är er deep kärlek. Då ska vi sätta pris på det Gud gör. God absolutely transformed him that day. Gud förvandlade han fullständigt den dagen. I want you to think about Heidi Baker, Dr. Heidi Baker. Jag vill att du ska tänka på Heidi Baker, Dr. Heidi Baker. She is a PhD in uh, systematic theology. Doktorgrad i systematisk teologi. From the University of London, England. Fra Universitetet i London, England. A dedicated missionary. En 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 obvious missionary. Served in China. Tjänat i Kina. Served in Indonesia. I Indonesia. And then Mozambique, Africa. Och så i Mozambique, Afrika. And it almost killed her. Och det blev nästan tagit liv av. They worked and slaved, and they. Fordi de jobba och slava. Had two churches in England and two churches in Mozambique. Och de två menigheter i England, två menigheter i Mozambique. And all four of them were dying. Alla fyra var ute. She said, "I had enough." Då sa jag, "Jag fick nog." Wanted to come back and work for Kmart. Forget. Jag hade lust att börja och jobba på Oops. She came to Toronto. Men hon kom till Toronto. 
What's Pobes? Oops, it's like Oops. Denmark in Norway. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she was going to work for Oops. Oops. <laughs> and she walked in the door. Power of God hit her. Guds kraft slo ned henne. And she was stuck to the floor. Og hun var limt fast i gulvet. The whole week she spent on the floor. Hele uka var hun på gulvet. She could hardly crawl to the washroom. Og klarte nesten ikke å krabbe ut på dom. She was absolutely out of it by the power of God. Hun var helt slått ut av Guds kraft. And had a vision. Og så fikk hun en visjon. The first of many. Den første av mange visjoner. And Jesus said to her, don't be afraid to take more children. Og Jesus sa til henne, ikke vær redd for å ta inn flere barn i hans barn. Because there will always be enough for you. For det vil alltid være nok for deg. It's a long story, get her book, won't you? Lang historie, få tak i boka hennes. There will always be enough. Det vil alltid være nok, sa Gud. But just to make it short. Bare for å gjøre det kort da. She went home. Da dro hun hjem. Revival exploded. Vekkelsen eksploderte. And almost overnight, 7,000 churches. Og nesten over natta var det 7,000 menigheter. Now how do you start 7,000 churches? Hvordan starter man 7,000 menigheter? How do you start 7 churches? Hvordan starter du 7 menigheter? It has to be the Holy Spirit. Det må være den hellige ånd. Are you getting it? Får du tak i det? There needs to be the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon a person's life. Det behøves at en helligans kraft kommer over et menneskes liv. A divine, supernatural, life-changing encounter. Gudomlig overnaturlig møte. Through which you will never be the same again. Gjennom hvilket du kommer aldri til å bli den samme igjen. That's what we're talking about. Det er det vi snakker om. You. Du, being immersed in the fire of God, som blir dykket ned i Guds ild, baptized in the fire of God, i Guds ild. Of course, it's powerful. Selvfølgelig er det kraftfullt. Of course, it's life changing. Selvfølgelig er det livsgivende. We're dealing with the God of heaven here. Vi vi snakker om himlens Gud her. Seven thousand churches. Sju tusen menigheter. How many call that revival? Hvor mange de kaller det for vekkelse da? You say, well, has, has anything like that happened in Toronto? Er det noe sånt som har skjedd i Toronto, sier du? No. Nei. Not yet. Ikke enda. But we're believing it's coming. Men vi tror at det kommer. Now, you need to know that our church is at least five times bigger than it was. Du må tenke at menigheten vår har vokst fem ganger større enn den var. We have five locations now where we meet around the city. Vi har fem forskjellige steder hvor vi møtes rundt i byen. So it's getting better. Så det går jo bedre. The Canadians are slow to catch it, you know. Kanadierne er litt treige til å få tak i det. The Holy Spirit is in your midst, and hello, you need to get in on it. Den hellige ånd er i det midt, og da må du komme inn og ta del i det. I asked the Lord about that, and he said, well, the, don't you know the last are first, and the first will be last. Og så spurte jeg Herren om det, og sa, men vet du ikke om det siste skal bli det første, og det første, og det siste. And so Mozambique, the poorest country on earth, why shouldn't they have it first? Så Mozambique, som er det fattigste landet i verden, hvorfor snakker de på det først? See, it's for the desperate, it's for the hungry, it's for the thirsty. Du skjønner det, for de desperate, for de som er hungrige og tørste. When you seek God, something is supposed to happen. Men når du søker Gud, så er det meningen at noe skal skje. When you seek Him with all your heart, you will be found of Him. For når du søker Han med hele ditt hjerte, så vil du bli finnig av Han. How many read the book, The God Chasers? Mange er som har lest den boka, God Chasers. You heard about it, Tommy Tenney's book, God Chasers. Hørt om Tommy Tenney. Nobody's heard about that. Det er ingen som har hørt om det, heter den på norsk igjen, den boka. Ok. Jaget av Gud, ja. Well, see, my question is this. Spørsmålet mitt er dette. What happens when you catch him? Hva skjer når du fanger ham? You know, I used to drive down a certain road all the time, and there was a dog that would come running out of the neighbor's house, and he would chase my car. Skjønner, jeg pleide å ta en sånn fast vei, og da var det alltid en bikkje som kom ut fra en av naboene der, og begynte å løpe og jage etter bilen min. Så hver dag når jeg kjørte ut, så hver dag når jeg kjørte ut, så hver dag når jeg kjørte ut, så hver dag når jeg kjørte ut på en vanlig rute av min, så kom bikkja ut. Han kjørte ut bilen, og løpte med alle sine kjørte, og jagde etter bilen, og løpte med alle sine kjørte, og bjeffa, bjeffa, bjeffa. Hvor mange har sett det? 
Nå så. Har ni ever had a dog chase your car? Hur många har sett att en Norwegian dogs do that too then. En norsk bitch har jagat efter bilen din. Right? Well, one day I wondered I wonder what he do if I let him catch me. En alltså tänkte jag, vad kommer han att finna på hvis han fångar mig då? So I slowed the car right down so the dog could catch up to me, you know. Så jag bara började bromsa så att Bishak kunde know what to do. Så att Bishak kunde ta mig i fatt och då blev han and ran back home. Då blev så förvirrad visste inte vad han skulle göra och så löp han hem igen. See a lot of people are like that. Många är så. They're content to chase God their whole life. De är så förnöjd med att jaga efter Gud hela sitt liv. But what will you do if he slows down and lets you catch him? Men vi ska börja slå på bremsen så att du kan ta den igen och fånga han. Then what? Vad då? Now that will be life changing, won't it? Det vill bli liv som vann vill inte det. In the day that you seek him with all your heart, you will be found of him. Den dagen du söker han hela ditt hjärta så vill du bli funnet av han. God. Gud has something for you. Har något för dig. I want to ask you to take the freedom test here. Nå vill jag att du ska ta frihetstesten vår. 2 Corinthians 3:17. Andra Korinthierbrev 3:17. Now the Lord is the spirit. Herren är onden. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Och var Herrens ande är, där är det frihet. There's liberty. Det är frihet. There's freedom. Det är frihet. There's joy. Det är glädje. There's supernatural manifestations. Övernaturliga manifestationer är där. There's power. Det är kraft. There's healing. Det är helbredelse. There's deliverance. Det är utfrielse. The kingdom of God comes. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is. Du ser var den helige ande kommer, Herren som kommer. There is freedom. Så är det frihet. Now this is for you as an individual. Och detta gäller dig som ett individ. I want to say that God is doing something unique in Norway. Jag vill säga att Gud gör något helt unikt i Norge. Up until Norway, I've always said that England is the most on fire western nation. Helt till vi snackar om Norge så har jag sagt att England är den nation som står mest i brand för Herren i den västliga världen. And the denomination that David represents, Elam, is the only denomination I know that has gone for the revival pretty much as a whole. Och 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 det kyrkesamfund som David representerar är Elam. De de vi har sett är det kyrkesamfundet, så kanske det enaste som har gått efter väckelsen som ett helt kyrkesamfund. But Norway now has got a tremendous hunger that amazes me. Men Norge nu har en utrolig hunger som förundrar mig, förbälser mig. Not just the charismatics and the Pentecostals, but the Lutherans now. Ikke bare de karismatiske og pinsevenne, men lutheranerne nå. Amazing. Og jeg er helt forbanset. We had about 300 pastors come from Norway to our Catch the Fire conference last uh, September. I september i fjor så var det cirka 300 pastorer fra Norge som kom til Catch the Soaking-konferansen vår. And another 50. Och 50 till. Came to the, uh, the glory conference in October. Glory konferensen i oktober. Then we were here in January and there's 375 people in the leader school, which is huge for one of our leader schools. Så var vi här i januari så var det 375 påmält efter ledarskapsskolan vår och det är mycket till att vara en sån skola. And then working with Einar, I hear the hunger to start something where the holy spirit can meet with the people. Och så snackar med Einar och så snackar han om hungern efter att starta något som hur den helgon kan möta människor och människor kan möta helgon. So is a supernatural hunger in your nation. Så det är en övernaturlig hunger i din nation. That exceeds anything I've met in any western nation. Som övergår allt det jag har sett i någon västlig nation. For the river of God. Efter Guds älv for the outpouring of the holy spirit. Efter den helige ands utgivelse. And I think you need to pay very close attention to it especially all of you that are leaders. Och särskilt de som är ledare, se väldigt nöje på detta faktum. Surprise Satoli who works with Roland and Heidi Baker. Ja, en som heter Surprise Satoli som jobbar med Roland och Heidi Baker. 
and he is the director of their ministry in South Africa. Han er leder av tjenesten i Sør-Afrika. He had a prophetic word. Han fikk et profetisk ord for Norway. For Norge. And Sapresa is a man who constantly is having revelation of the Holy Spirit. Og Sapresa han får hele tiden oppenbaringer fra den hellige ånd. He's very open to the Spirit. He's just amazing. Han er veldig åpen for den hellige ånd. Han er helt utrolig tilfellig. And we have a little clip of what he had to say, and I want to show it to you right now. Og vi har et lite klipp av det han ønsker å si. Jeg skal vise det for deg. Can we go ahead and show that clip, guys? Can we vise det klippet? I love the preacher. In physical, I've never been in Norway. I've been in most of the countries like Ukraine and Germany and France and Russia and most of the countries. And three years ago. Right. Just three years ago, I had this incredible vision. And the vision, I saw the starting of the fires. And there was a fire, all the spot that the fire was burning, I saw the spots. And one of the spots that the fire was burning was no way. No way the fire could just blew up like a volcano and from nowhere was going towards to Sweden, to Denmark and so on, but the fire started blowing up in Norway. And then somewhere between the borders of another country there was like a wall that was like making the fire not to pass it through. But that fire was so much strong and no barrier could stop the fire. And he had, it, uh, had destroyed the walls and it kept on going fast towards going this side, like going to Russia and then so on. And that fire, and then it came down, coming slow and he reached England even. That fire went all the way coming to Jerusalem. So that was in the vision, the vision was three years ago. And then the fire again started in Taiwan. I saw the fire, that the same fire started in Taiwan. And then the Taiwan it went from the southern part all the way to Taipei. That fire went to Seoul and it's coming down to Shanghai, to Beijing in China, going straight to Nepal, going all the way to Israel. And I saw the fire again here in Toronto, on Young Street and all the way in British Columbia was on fire and just right there in Vancouver. There was a fire here in Toronto, there was a fire and many regions in Africa saw, uh, I saw like a Benin was on fire and then the fire comes, Benin, yes, that is a little bit around me. Nigeria, so that was on fire, and even Nigeria was on fire, and then Congo was on fire, and Sudan, and the fire we are keeping going towards Jerusalem. So, those spots that you have seen in the vision about that revival of end time fire, it is still remain on my mind. So, when, uh, when I came, Beth was just driving in Young Street. And then he said, this is Young Street. I said, oh, I've never been in Young Street before. But I remember three years ago, I was saw the fire, the people who march with the fire inside of the fire in this street. So I believe for sure, without a doubt, and I don't have a doubt at all. <laughs> Maybe Norwegian may have a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking a blow anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I believe for sure that there will be a greatest revival that is going to break out in Norway without a doubt, without a barrier, without a stopping. Nobody will stop that revival that is going to break out in Norway. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's not yet a time to figure it out. Let's just all together flow in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question. All right.
Altså, han så en vision om Guds ill over hele verden, men han så Norge som en vulkan, og, det, og som spredte sig over til Sverige, Danmark og så videre. Sånn. Og så var det at illen ville in på gjennom et nytt land, men det var en vegg som reiste sig, men illen var så stark, at veggen hadde ikke en sjans, og den gikk videre in i Russland, og så videre, sånn, hvis jeg forstod det riktigt. Det var litt dårlig lyd her, men det er helt fantastisk dette her. Suppressor so, saw three fire centers. Suppressor so, saw three centers of ill. Toronto, Toronto, Taiwan, Taiwan, Norway, Norge. And the fire spreading from all of those places. Oh, it spread this out from all of these places. All over, but heading for Jerusalem. Over hele hele jorda, men men målet var Jerusalem. You know, there's tremendous revival going on in Taiwan right now. Det er voldsomme vekkelser i Taiwan akkurat nå. And indeed, all over China. Og over hele Kina. Tremendous revival in Toronto that we've seen go to the nations of the earth. Veldig vekkelser i Toronto som vi har sett gått ut til jordens nasjoner. And so, our Soaking Center network is in 75 nations now. Så Soaking Center nettverket vårt, det er i 75 nasjoner nå. And so now here, Norway is catching fire. Så nå fatter Norge ill. With businessmen and pastors excited enough to come all the way to Toronto for a week. Med forretningsfolk og pastorer som er så begeistret at de kommer hele veien til Toronto og er der en uke. And then bring it home and do something about it. Og tar det hjem og gjør noe med det. And with everything that's within me, I want to urge you. Og med alt som er i meg, så vil jeg altså sterkt oppmuntre deg. To press through the public opinion and the press and the media and the newspaper. Til å presse gjennom folkemeningen og pressen og media. That are trying to put fear of deception into your heart sometimes. Som prøver å fylle deg med frykt for villfarelse. And say, I want the revival that is this nation's destiny. Og at du skal si at jeg vil ha den vekkelsen som har med Norges hensikt å gjøre. If you're afraid, get out of the way. Hvis du er redd, så kom unna deg. Because we're coming through with the Bible. For the week, we're going to see them. Now let's read Luke 19, verse 41. Lucas 19, 41. Luke 19, 41. Lucas 19, 41. As Jesus drew near to the city, he saw the city and wept over it. Da han kom der byen, og så byen, gråt han over den og sa, If you, Jerusalem, even you had known, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Hvis det også du som en først på denne din dag, Jerusalem, hva som tjener til din fred, men nå er det skjult for dine øyne. And so basically he says in 43 and 44, so now disaster is going to come upon you. Så grunnleggende så sier han i vers 43 og 44 at ødeleggelse skal komme over deg. And they'll level you to the ground and not leave one stone upon another. Og de kommer til å jevne deg med jorden og steinen skal ikke bli tilbake på stein. Because you did not know the hour of your visitation. For du forsto ikke din besøkelsestid. Can you imagine... Kan du tenke deg? A nation praying for revival. En nasjon som ber om vekkelse. A nation vekkelse. praying for the Messiah to come. Ber om at Messias skal komme. And when the Messiah came. Og når Messias da kom. They did not recognize him. Så gjenkjente de ham ikke. Because it did not look like their expectation. For det så ikke ut sånn som de forventet at det skulle være. They somehow imagined themselves in charge of it once it would come. De tenkte liksom at de skulle føre an når det en gang kom. It nev never occurred to them that things would be turned upside down. Men de tenkte ikke på det at ting skulle bli snudd helt på huet. And that carpenters and fishermen would lead the nation. Og at det var tømmemenn og, og fiskere som skulle lede nasjonen. And so they're saying this can't be it. Så da sier de, men dette er jo ikke det. And they did not recognize the hour of their visitation. De gjenkjente ikke sin besøkelsestid. See, revival has always been controversial. Du skjønner vekkelse har alltid vært kontroversielt. I can remember saying, Jesus, I can hardly wait till mighty healings start happening. Men jeg husker at jeg sa til Jesus at jeg kan nesten ikke vente for mektige helbredelser finner sted. Then all the critics will go away. For da vil alle de kritikerne bli borte. For da har de ikke noe mer å si, da, vet du. 
tremendous healings start happening. Vad vidunderliga helbredelser startar att ske. And the Lord said, "Haven't you read the Bible?" Och Herren sa, "Har du inte läst Bibeln du?" All it does is makes it worse. Allt det gör är att det blir mycket värre. Because it's not about is it the truth or not? För det handlar inte om är detta sanningen eller inte. It's really about who's in charge. Nej, men det handlar om vem är det som har föringen. That's always the issue. Det är alltid frågsmålet. Who's in charge? Vem har föringen? Carol and I have purpose to say Holy Spirit this is your revival. Carol jag vi har bestämt oss i hjärtat vårt och vi har sagt att Helligon detta är din väckelse. We're not in charge of this thing. Vi för inte an i detta. This is your kingdom. Detta är ditt rike. Thank you for letting us be a part of it. Tack att vi får låta vara en del av det. Because we're just nobodies from nowhere. För vi är bara någon någon nuller som kommer från. We're just the foolish things that Carol was talking about. Hur skulle det som Carol snacka om? The donkeys that carry his presence. Dessa eslarna som bar hans närvar. But I tell you what. Men hur skulle det? I have recognized the hour of our visitation. Jag ska säga att jag har gensett vår besökelsestid. I know this is God. Jag vet att detta är Gud. I said to some leaders one time. En gång så sa jag till någon ledare. I said guys, you're asking me to stop something that I know that I could die for. Dere ber meg om å stanse noe som jeg er villig til å dø for. And so I'm sorry. Så jeg er lei meg. But we're not stopping. Men vi kommer ikke til å stoppe. Because this is God. For dette er Gud. And I want to say to all of you. Og jeg vil si til alle dere. You leaders. There's a, you leaders. Dere ledere. There's a lot at stake. Det er mye som står på spill. When you embrace revival, you embrace controversy. Når du omfavner vekkelse, så omfavner du også å bli omdiskutert. And people surprise you who... Who does not stand with you? Och du kan bli förundrad över de som inte står med dig plötsligt. I love men like Bill Johnson. Jag älskar folk som Bill Johnson. He was touched by revival. Som har blivit berörd av väckelse. And he went home to his church of 2000 people. Han drog hem till menigheten sin som hade 2000 medlemmar. And over 1000 of them left. Over 1000. They said this, this is not the church that we have learned to love. De sa detta är inte det menet vi har lärt oss att trivas i. All these people falling and all this shaking all and all this stuff. Alla som terrorister och allt detta. And Bill said, I don't care. Och Bill sa jag bryr mig inte. Leave if you must. Visst du måste så måste. I was born for this. Men jag blev född för det. What happened? Det som skedde. He recognized the hour of his visit. Han genkände sin besökelsestid. God is visiting your nation. Gud besöker din nation. This is the hour of your visitation. Det är timmen, din besökelsestimme. I asked them the other day. Här om dagen så spurtade jag. Two kings were anointed by a great man of God, Samuel. Två konger var salvet av en 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 Guds man Samuel. One was Saul. En var Saul. One was David. En var David. Whose anointing would you like? Vilken salvelse har du lust till att få? They all said David's anointing. All of a David's salvelse. We don't want Saul's anointing. We want David's anointing. We will not Saul's salvelse. We will not David's. Well, I said, well, actually, they were both the same. And so Simon salvelse ne var de samme. The same man of God. Samme Guds man. Or the same holy oil. Helt den samme hellige olje. And the same Holy Spirit. Og den samme hellige olje. Came upon both men. Kom over begge men. What was the difference? Hva var forskjellen? What you do with it. Hva gjør du med det? What you do with it? Det du gör med det, det är det som är forskel. You see, I found something that I could die for, literally, if I have to. Du känner, jag bokstavligt talat har funnit något som jag vill inte dö för, för det är fett för att stå i det. Jag älskar dessa grejer. We go and we go some more. Vi går och fortsätter vi lite till, för jag älskar det. This is the answer to the world's problem. Det är svaret på världens problem. A visitation of God. Ett besök av Gud. And Norway, I'm telling you, listen to me. Och Norge, och hör på mig. This is the hour of your visitation. Det är din timme av besökelse. Grab a hold of it with everything that's within you. Ta tag i dem allt som är i dig. And cut away the traditions that would slow you down. Och kutta alla traditioner som vill försinka dig. And tell him, oh Holy Spirit. Och säg, kom Helge Hon. We want you to be in charge. Vi vill att du ska föra. We want you to be the pastor. Vi vill att du ska vara hjälpen. We want you to be the leader. Vi vill att du ska vara ledaren. Come and fall upon us with your mighty presence. Kom och fall över oss med din mäktiga närvaro. And save our nation. Och rädd vår nation. From the lie of the post-Christian era. 
the post-Christian era. Ja, från den postkristna era. There's no such thing as a post-Christian era. Det finns inte något sånt som en postkristen era, en efterkristen era. There are more Christians alive today than Nei. any other period in history. Det är fler kristna som lever nu än någon gång. One billion strong. En miljard starka är vi. And friends will say, so are you getting involved in that? Och så vi vänner säger, ska du Toronto thing? Blir man vet att Toronto grann du? Here's what I say.